Hello, how everyone doing today? My name is BJ Spencer. I'm here with my guest, Enoch Johnson. Uh, thank you for joining us today on my audio video cast today. Uh, we're going to be talking about a really cool topic today. Um, aliens, Hollywood, the music industry, giants, and God. So I'm here with my, my guest today, Enoch Johnson. Enoch, how you doing today, man? What's up, man? What is up? This is a long time coming. That's long right. I'm coming. Feels good. Yeah. Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing good. Uh, it's been working on different things. Uh, what about you? I've been doing. I've been doing pretty good, man. Just been uh, working a little bit of here and there, doing a little music here and there, working, Just trying to stay busy. You know, be productive. It's the best thing to do in this life. Be productive, even mm -hmm. when things don't work out or don't happen how you think they should being productive is always the key moving forward so uh tell us a little bit about yourself enoch like uh what do you do for a living and what what's your passions dreams different things like that whatever you want to share uh what do i do for a living i'm a i'm a chef uh i do some yard work around town uh anything i can do to get some money really uh, passions. I'm real passionate about music. Um, I'm real passionate about helping people in the church. Uh, uh, helping helping volunteer at the church I belong to, uh, mainly with the youth. I like to help young people yeah. navigate so through cool. life because uh, they need it. They need the help just as much as we do, if not more, because they're the future. That's right. We, we share similar experiences. We both worked with youth for a lot of years. Uh, you know, we were all kids once ourselves, all teenagers once, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, young adults. And so we, you know, now we're getting up there in age as the years go by. I don't ever consider myself old, just older. And I think it's a good mindset to have, have in life. Uh, Enoch is also, he's got several music projects he's worked on over the years. Uh, he's been uh, involved with a band called Dapper Soul over the years. Uh, we both are in a collaboration with our friend Tyler uh, called Neon Toboggans. I was in a band back in the day uh, called the Daniel Matthews Band. Uh, they're named Fair Brother now. Uh, all these bands that I'm naming, you can go check them out. So, uh, and Enoch has got some solo stuff he's working on in the future. Uh, we both have a passion for music. We've both been involved in worship teams. We've been part of uh, music projects. Uh, Enoch is a singer and a drummer, and uh, he's you know got some other talents too, mixing music. And and uh, I'm a bass player, singer, pianist. Um, One of the funkiest bass players in the land. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. <laughs> you know, I always let people compliment me, man. I don't ever say that about myself because I always got stuff to learn. So. <coughs> I haven't picked it up in a while, but I, I'm trying to get back into it. So, uh, but yeah, both a, a lot of a, a lot of talent. Enoch's got a lot of talent. Uh, good writer too, I'd say too. Uh, very good collaborating stuff. We we both were uh, we both were together uh, at this place called the Gathering a Coffee Shop. We were there for Enoch was there for what three years, maybe two three yeah, years. About three. Yeah, about three years. And I I worked uh, I volunteered up there uh, uh, for probably about five, six years. So, uh, but we both met up there. Um, and then it's, you know, after we met, I mean, we connected pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're pretty similar in our personalities and stuff. We, we kind of view life the same way, but, uh, we, you know, iron sharpens iron and Enix a great friend. We've been friends for a while. Uh, and he's been uh, really good about, uh, keeping me on track with certain things. And, and, uh, and I appreciate that about him. Good guy. So, we're going to dive right in. I, I asked Enoch to pick a topic, and uh, Enoch seems to have the angle on the Hollywood and the music industry. Uh, <laughs> and some of the stuff he shared me, I, I, he sends me videos all the time. So before we get started on that, we're going to dive into Hollywood and the music industry. We might talk about aliens a little bit. And, uh, and of course, we'll talk about God, too. He's, uh, he's part of it all, um, underlying everything. And so... Um, this is uh, just I just want to bring a disclaimer that everything we're sharing today is theory, uh, opinion, uh, and maybe about 80 percent fact. <laughs> so there are a lot of facts in what we're sharing. We feel like we've done enough research to where we we could come and present a product to you uh, 
that might be worth at least some thought. Um, and then some of the stuff we might be saying might be totally off off base. But we want to leave that up to your your opinion, you know, and whatever you think, feel free to comment. And uh, we're going to just dive right in. Uh, what do you dive in with something like this? It's so there's so much to it. You mm -hmm. know, there's so much, uh, there's so much hidden behind the scenes. You know, there's when, when we watch a movie, when we listen to music, uh, when you watch the Oscars or a lot of work goes into it, there's a lot of work that goes into it, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that's good about it. I think that we would agree that Hollywood and the music industry has been not all bad. There's a lot of good out of it that has come out of it. Uh, a lot of inspiration to people, a lot of, um, happy 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 stuff that's come out of it joyful music um a lot of good films out there a lot of good movies you know one of my favorite actors is denzel washington I, I love denzel he's one of my favorite i think that's one of enix too he likes denzel and and uh uh but we're going to dive into some of that stuff we'll talk about that stuff too but we're going to talk also about what is really going on behind the scenes that is not so pleasant and is uh, we we believe it's it's there's a there's a sinister force behind it ultimately uh, that it's never we don't like you know it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood so we know that our battle is actually not against these people that we're going to talk about we don't have anything against these people and what we're sharing is nothing hateful it's just what we've observed happening behind the scenes so Enoch tell us a, tell us about an eye opening experience for you that you observed in the media or culture. That had you questioning the reality that is being presented to us in television or media. So, uh, growing up, I mean, in high school, they had those uh, Illuminati videos. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I remember. Uh, kind of goofy, kind of goofy, goofy presentation, uh, and I always kind of looked at it like uh, some some wacko out there is trying to make it be more than what it is. Uh, but then I'd say probably five or six years ago, uh, I was on YouTube and a video popped up about Tom Brady. Mm. Uh, and I want to uh, preface that before I go on. Yeah, uh, that's fine. So in high school, I was not a Christian. So I didn't look... I didn't look at things through a spiritual lens. I was just looking at it as, you know, what life, what, what the world said like, like life is, what yeah. the world says life is. Right. Uh, and so then I stumbled upon this Tom Brady video. Uh, it was something to the effect of uh, how Tom Brady deflated the ball or something like that. I remember that. Yeah. That scandal huge back deal. in the day where he cheated or they said he cheated. Uh, from he probably deflating cheated. the ball, he probably, he probably did. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Uh, he was good though. Tom Brady was good. Can't take away from that. But. That's right. But anyways, this uh, this video it starts off talking about how it would be possible and how much a deflated ball would affect the game. But then he starts going into all these spiritual things about how uh, how there are. Uh, people that in, that are involved in witchcraft and all these things, and that actually, Tom Brady was, at the time of that Super Bowl was married to a witch or uh, someone who was considers it himself Giselle? as a witch. Giselle, wasn't it? Giselle. Yeah, I think it's Giselle. Yeah, Giselle. I said and, Giselle, uh, not Giselle. Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he started talking about how she um, basically told them when when they were and were not going to win the Super Bowls yep. and that she was communing with some spirit, which I believe is a demon. But right, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, they have the demons and devils, I believe, have uh, what's the word? They have uh, some dominion over things on Earth. Right. With permission from God. So uh, it wasn't too far-fetched for me when, when I heard that. And then it just he just keeps going into these things about uh, the Baphomet, which is like the Satanist cult idol, I guess mm. you would call it. Uh, and it talks about how he uh, would he would consult his wife, and she would have him do these rituals and 
all these things before games, preparing for games. And uh, it's just some crazy stuff. And I had never heard anything like that. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean? Like, don't they just work out? <laughs> don't, yeah, they just, yeah. don't they just eat right, exercise? Yeah. What do, you, the, like, what do you mean? Yeah, there's something else they're doing now? Yeah. And so I, uh, I looked at a few more videos about certain people. And I didn't really, uh, didn't really dig any more into it. Cause it's still, there's always still that suspicion, you know, it's kind of right. like, uh, it's probably just somebody in their basement got too much time on their hands just thinking about this stuff. But then man, like the, you started chasing that rabbit. Oh, uh, well, I, that's the thing. I, I don't chase the rabbit. I don't think, I think God is like one way or another revealing these things to me through these videos. Cause like, I so don't, you're not I trying don't to go. see how deep the hole goes, but then all of a sudden you're just kind of going along your way and then videos are popping up. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm minding my business and these videos are popping up. About, like, Wait a minute. Oh, what did, uh, what did or Orlando Bloom say about Panda rituals or all these things? Uh, what is, uh, what's that guy? Uh, Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Epstein Island. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, I mean, so many things. And then they had the documentary, that was really when I started gaining interest into it, uh, learning about Jeffrey Epstein and all these. Was that the Epstein documentary? Yeah, on Netflix. Oh yes, everybody tells me to watch it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Everybody uh, said, "Oh man, it's it digs into some stuff." Yeah, it definitely validated some things for me. And then the uh, fact after then you see Epstein just magically, you know, end his life. Mm -hmm. And the security guard cameras didn't work. All of a sudden, we can't find footage. Yeah, everything and just everything happened. just falling in place. Yep. And then Maxine was it Maxine mm -hmm. goes to trial, and they won't reveal any of the names of the people that she's involved with mm -hmm. and high profile people and names that came across. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, I'm like you when you start. It's probably it started getting revealed to you. There's something up here, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so the Tom Brady thing was a big deal for me because it's like, oh wait, there just there's people out there that willingly like listen to witches and uh, I obviously don't aspire to that lifestyle, but uh, it's like it just kind of blew my mind uh, that people are willing to do all these things in the spiritual, right? To win, to win in the physical. It's like whoa. Like and you almost wonder, man, I got to sell my soul to, <laughs> yeah. to become famous. Yeah, you know? and then you, yeah, you hear you hear this stuff about musicians saying, "Oh, he sold his soul." Oh, well, like you just think, oh, that's just a metaphor, or something people just say. But no, like they're actually out here, like not living for God. They're 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 like trying to do whatever it takes to get to the top, whether that's following the devil or. <laughs> yeah following these weird ritual things to do well Crazy. like you said you really have to follow the rabbit too much i mean people put i remember someone was talking about katie perry and and uh i mean you can get on youtube you can check out katie perry you can check out lady gaga there is they probably try to bury him but there's several videos where katie perry talks about how her being involved in church when she's younger and she pretty much says it like over and over and over and over again i sold my soul to the devil yeah i had to sell my soul to the devil like mm -hmm. and making fun of like church now and stuff she says it like she says these things over and over again and then you can watch a whole documentary how lady gaga he goes into the cult and gets baptized in, into the water into this this known this lady who's a known satanist a known occultist uh, that is involved and in, she's connected everybody from Jay-Z to Lady Gaga. She has her hands all in the music industry uh, and, the, and then the uh, media in Hollywood and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, like, it's right there. I mean, whether you want to, I mean, it, you, it's not, I think people think entertainment, right? But this stuff is going on behind the scenes. You don't even see it happening. So how can it be for entertainment? These people are doing this stuff behind the scenes. So, you know, What's the and why are they so against the church? You know, why are they so fighting against, you know, the good of humanity and stuff like that? Why is their message, you know, why is it so secret? If there's, you know, why aren't they more, out more in the open? So mm -hmm. uh, you can just do a little research and that you can, there'll be a, not just one rabbit, there'll be many rabbits to follow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, saying, saying all that, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's all, theory mm -hmm. 
because I don't I don't know any of these people personally. Right. Uh, we don't know. We may be totally off base. Yep. You know? It's this could all just be someone trying to uh, deface these celebrities because they're jealous or whatever. Yeah. But man, there's so much. There's so much of it. You know, so much. Yep. I feel like there's got to be some truth in it. Got to be some truth in it. Every lie, every lie, there's some truth. Got to be mm -hmm. some truth in there. Uh, but yeah, well, not every lie, but like when it's got this much. Right. When there's so, so much to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a lot to it, you know. And I remember when you, I think it was you that sent me that, that, uh, that uh, Tom Brady video. And I was like, whoa. And I mean, he just talked about it so no nonchalantly. Yeah, she's a witch. And I'm like, wait a, wait a minute. Let me rewind that real quick. Did he just say his wife is a witch? Mm -hmm. And then he, you know, he's sitting there getting a shave, you know. It was for <laughs> Gillette. You know? Yeah, Gillette, Gillette. And I was commercial. like, I said, wait a minute. And that's when I started going, man, there's something up with this, you know. Mm -hmm. I got I to gotta check out what's up, you know. But um, I'm always a wait and see kind of person, you know, when it comes to that stuff. Wait and see. Wait and see what kind of person they are. And and see what see what comes out but i think it's like it's pretty out in the open i feel like a lot of it it's not really like i felt like some of this stuff would be hidden now I, i'm a, the the thing whatever you want to believe it's a free country you know you can believe whatever you want to believe but i think when your beliefs start getting into to, to, to areas where people are starting to be harmed mm -hmm. and bad things are happening to people people disappearing you know uh blood sacrifices all kinds of crazy stuff like that when that starts to happen that's when it's like okay this is not no longer about like you know i'm a hindu or i'm a muslim or i'm a christian or i believe you know that i should be married to a tree you know or live this lifestyle it's no longer about that it's something else is is behind the scene um so uh do you think there's any difference in how they are trying to come across in the inter entertainment industry today versus like 30 years ago uh how they're trying to come across like uh, like a message you're trying to present or trying to in a, in a way they're trying to influence people um like today versus 30 40 years ago mm. yes and no um i think the <laughs> i think the message you know for all of them is look at this give me your money but uh, <laughs> money's the underlying money's thing. The money's underlying, the underlying, yeah. The root, like money's the root for sure. Uh, but the way they're going about it, I think so. I think it's definitely more aggressive these days. Uh, as far as pushing their agendas, um, I mean, you got people now that are blatantly promoting their Satanist uh, faith. I mm -hmm. guess you could call it. Uh, and, uh, you know, 30 years ago, you got like Sammy Davis Jr., probably the only mm -hmm. person that was really out talking about, or that was way more than 30 years, but right. talking about that he was the devout Satanist and part of the Satan Satanist church. Uh, but now you got, you know, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Nas X, and pretty big name artists that are worshiping Satan, saying it out loud. Uh, even like the weekend flashing, flashing stuff at that his is, concerts. That's crazy, man. <laughs> so, that's, yeah. that's, that's just nuts to me. It's like, what, how can you not say there's not something going on, you know, mm -hmm. flashing, flashing Satan, big red on the, on the screen behind him. Uh, what was, what was it? Uzi Vert? That was one up there saying, all right, everybody, we're going to sell our soul to the devil. Let's do it. Wasn't it mm -hmm. him? Like, mm -hmm. And, that, started and everybody getting... started chanting with him. All right, I'm a, I love, you know, and they were started chanting this. Well, actually, a lot of them started booing him because they were like, no, we're not. No. We don't agree with that. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't <laughs> in the then, song list. <laughs> and then he starts, he starts getting mad at him and yelling, oh, it's too late. You're already coming with me. Wow. And stuff is like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yep. Uh, but yeah. Oh, and uh, what's her name? Um, she dressed up like a demon in her in her video. Can't think of her name now. She's pretty big name. Uh, 
What is her name? I try not to think about these negative things. Yeah, all the time. yeah. Well, you know, you had uh, Doja Cat. Doja Cat. I was going to say, I was right on the tip of my tongue. You got the whole group of Doja Cat. Yeah, some of the stuff that's come out with her, man, it's been just like the weirdest. And even people that are like in the Hollywood industry are kind of like, what are you trying to do here, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's just little by little, you know, getting people away from God. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, more people were more, if not like reverent to God, they were at least, you know, like we respect people that believe this way. Right. And we're not going to be, we're not going to push our thing to the front heavy because we know it's not really accepted by society. But now society is like, oh, do whatever you want, you know? And, uh, <laughs> And so they're like, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> yep. And they're really pushing it now. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, we're, uh, um, what's his name that, uh, the horses in the back guy? Yeah, Lil Nas X. L- Lil Nas X came out with them, you know, the, the Satan shoes. And, yeah, yeah. And then the company, the and it's, I mean, it, they came out and there was a lot of backlash over it. And then all of a sudden they were like, well, that wasn't us. That was an independent brand. And I'm thinking, well, that's what's happening now. They're gonna they, they they subtly test the test the waters like and say, Oh, let's try this and if it they get a huge backlash, all right, let's back up. We didn't really want to do that. We'll just say we're disconnected to it and we're not connected to it. And when the fire gets too hot for them, they'll they back up from it, you know, and but like little Nas X has never been you know, he's never backed off from who he is. He's he just he he's like, This is who I am, you know. And uh what did you think? What did you think that song was about? That's what he said. You know, when they ask him, the horses in the back, and people are like, they were singing it. And they didn't they know that I'm talking about sleeping with a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You know, so he ne- he was never, you know, hiding what he, his true intentions were. You know, and how he. Did. But a lot of those artists today, I mean, I'll just shotgun a few, and you know, you 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 just uh, tell me like uh, uh, maybe some things you might you know have to have to say about them so um uh, but before i before i do that i'll go into a few that i have uh there's so there's cory feldman i don't know if you cory know cory feldman is he's a child star he he was huge um back in the day was in several movies back in the day several big movies um child star and he basically came out not too long ago and basically was exposing the industry basically saying like there's like child pedophilia going on in hollywood they try to groom him he was like abused and all the stuff that he came out and he said and like people just like the first thing that they do is they say first of all instead of question if what he says is real real they're like oh he must have a mental illness or something there must be something wrong with this kid and they come out come out and say it and but now we start to question all that as like even more like is this really true what he's saying it could it could be true people start thinking this could be because then you have people like justin bieber coming out and putting a music video out that the music doesn't have anything to do with the video uh the song yummy and you can clearly see what he was exposing is the these executives and these people that are in these companies taking advantage of children you know using children you know selling children you know and the artists and the you know the and the artist you know so Justin Bieber talked about how he does, he can name the people right now, you know, and I don't think he goes any deeper than he's gone because he's trying to protect his family. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a wife and a kid now. And so he's trying to protect them, but he was trying to tell everybody, Hey, look, bro, there's stuff happening in the music the in industry. These people in the top of this thing are taking advantage. And you watch videos where like, you have like, I think it was Jenny McCarthy came up behind him and kind of kissed him on the neck or nibbled on his neck and he was trying to say whoa whoa everybody thought oh it's funny it's set up and but justin was basically saying like all these people were like he had older women wanting to like sleep with him because of you know his influence and and you know a young attractive guy that's what they were th- thinking and he said they were he was propositioned a lot you know and he said sometimes stuff happened and he's there was all these people asking him questions like saying stuff like if you oh if you were older stuff like that i'd you know i'd eat you up like and i'm thinking these these are grown men and women saying this stuff to justin bieber and so uh to pretend that there's not something going on in the the industry is you know ludicrous and then you mentioned sammy davis jr i mean you mentioned stuff that went on with him and so i you know what about like uh 
what about like a guy like uh, John Legend or Ariana Grande or, you know, I mentioned uh, John Legend, Ariana Grande, uh, Kanye West. What about people like that? Any, any, anything on them? Oh, man. Now, John you Legend. Said, you said John Legend John first. Legend. John Legend. Let's start at John Legend. Let's start at John Legend. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, I don't know too much about John Legend. I do know that he was on that, uh, that, uh, what's the flight list for Epstein? Oh, yeah, Epstein. Island. Yep. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife. Uh, he's, he, I mean, he seems, he seems like he could be a little shady, but that's just my opinion. Uh, like he's I got mean, his foot in the water a little bit, but he's not all the way in. He probably knows what's going on for sure. He might have had to do some uh, shady things to be where he's at. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything too crazy. Uh, he seems to respect, you know, God and stuff. He's he's worked with some Christians and, uh, you know, yeah, that's where I'm at on John Legend. I don't I don't know too much about him. All right, what about Ariana Grande, man? Oh man, no, she's <laughs> she's a little further in. She's a little further in. She, uh, well, there's, there, there's the I'm gonna stand at the edge of the woods, and then there's Ariana who's done gone into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she started. So started she's she had a rough start into uh, entertainment in general, working with uh, Dan Schneider, which was uh, convicted of molesting mm, child actors. I did not stuff, know so. that. Wow. Uh, yeah, so he, I believe he was convicted or he was definitely being investigated for it. But I mean, I'm pretty, I think, I think there were some people that came out and said, like people that worked for him that said that they confirmed that, that he was doing those, doing mm -hmm. those things. Uh, but yeah, so she was, she was working under him and, you know, I think huge TV networks like that anyways, there's some shady business going on. Uh, cause it, it's just, it's pretty evident. Well, the women, you, I know women things. used to talk about it a lot more. I don't notice, I've noticed they don't talk about it as much. You used to talk about when they were sexually harassed by a boss or something. Yep. And you don't see that as much anymore. I'm like, you know, it didn't go away. <laughs> yeah. So there's no telling what she had to do to get to that point. And then now she's like real love is love. Uh, I saw a video the other day of her talking about how she started going to the Catholic church when she was young and uh, she didn't like, she didn't like how people treated her basically in the church and how they were anti homosexuality and all these things. And so she was like, uh, now I've, now I'm embarking in my spiritual journey, more spiritual, not re not religious, not religious uh, journey. Uh, which is good if you're following the right spirit. Right. <laughs> Who knows what spirits she's talking about. So, yeah, that's that's where she's at right now, uh, as far as I know. I'm going to open up the can of worms on the other guy because I know you have a lot to say about it, but I'll uh, let's see. Skip him for now, and then I'm going to go to, uh, like, what about, like, uh, what about Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. You know anything about Brad Pitt? I don't know anything about Brad Pitt. He's he's a huge uh, huge name though. Huge so. A lister. Yep. There's no telling. Top of the game, top five. And when we when we talk about in, uh, you know, there's in. There's a <laughs> there's a uh, I guess you could call it a rumor that in order to get to a surf, certain level of success, you have to do certain things, certain rituals, certain, yep. like what, kind of like what I was talking about with Tom Brady and his wife. But, uh, yeah. So people, people have stories. That's all they are. As far as we know, stories that big name artists have had to do uh, certain acts, whether those be, uh, illegal or sexual or mm -hmm. anything like that. You know, you could go down the list, all these bad things to basically appease to these people at the top that are pulling all the strings, you know, the puppeteers, what they like to call them. Uh, 
So that's what we mean when we say they're probably in. They're probably in deep with mm-hmm. it. They're probably doing whatever the puppeteers are telling them to do. To stay at that level of influence. To, to stay at that level of influence and success. Right. Yep. And with the amount of success that Brad Pitt has. And <laughs> you kind of wonder. Can you wonder. It makes you wonder what what all he did to be where he's at. I think he's kept him. If the if he's in anything, he's kept himself very um, He's kept himself very out of it. You know what I mean? So you kind of wonder, like, maybe he's he knows a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. And he doesn't like he's very and they know he's a very hush hush guy. So maybe they don't ask him to do as much because he does know so much and he's very closed lipped and they've never had any problem with him. You know, and he's just like, I'm trying to mind my own business and do my own thing. You know, I'll take care of my kids. I don't, I'm not going to. So they know that about him. And he's so big that they like we got to be a little careful, more careful with Brad Pitt because he is so big. And if he were to be influenced in the other direction, then he, he could blow this thing wide open, you know. Yeah. Could but that's some. that's also the position one would take if <laughs> they were trying to keep doing their evil things under under wraps, just not say anything. Right. That way you don't let go of any information. Well, I've kind of feel like someone who kind of knows kind of stuff that's going on that maybe talks about it, but subtly, but like also doesn't get as involved in it is because he's trying to keep himself in the right mindset and you know his heart towards God. I think like is Denzel Washington. I feel like that way a little bit. I don't know a ton, a ton, but I know, you know, he's if if he if there's stuff going on behind the scenes, he probably knows what's going on. But he seems like he stays disconnected from a lot of it. But yeah, so I don't I don't know if you wanted to go into it right now, but uh, Cat Williams. Oh yeah, Cat Williams. Yeah, talking. Uh, oh, we talking go right about, into it, man. Yeah, dive right in. Yeah, Cat Williams talking about uh, with Shannon Sharp about uh, Kevin Hart. You know, having to do. Having to do certain things like wearing the dress and oh, I remember it's so weird. Yeah, doing the uh, people are laughing about it. Like, what's going on? You know, <laughs> <laughs> doing the what they call humiliation rituals, mm-hmm. which is a big part. Seems of to be the more common thing, yeah. the hum- humiliation rather humiliation. than child sacrifice. You know, yeah, it, I don't think it escalates that quickly, but it could. No, yeah, uh, but you know, there's he says. He says that there's a an alliance, I guess, of people that just don't they just don't do the things to get their success. And so it's harder for them. And it's not only harder because they don't have the the strings pulled for them, but it's also like the people that are in it. They're fighting against them because they don't want them to get it uh, as easy as they got it. Uh, if that makes sense. No, it does make sense. I remember. I'm trying to remember who it was. I, I, wanted, I thought it might have been Bernie Mac, or it might have been one of those, one of the famous comedians. Um, I don't think it was Dave Chappelle, but I mean, Dave Chappelle's come out against, against a lot of stuff too. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cat Williams talked about Dave Chappelle, talking about how he wasn't. He's not one of the ones that sold out. He actually t- that talking about how he turned down that fifty million. Yep. So he signed, or they presented him a contract that he was supposed to make way more than 50 million like something like 200 million but and there stipulations but there were stipulations that were going to leave him to only make 50 million and that he was going to have to do something i don't remember what it was something that didn't make sense and so the story to try and embarrass him because he turned it down was that he turned down 50 million but I mean, he was going to get screwed even more. Right. And there was, I don't remember what it was that they said, but yeah, he was going to lose all that money anyways. So he might as well just not take it and keep his dignity. And then he went in and he's gone on to make m- much more than that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's back touring and everything doing good. Yeah. I think in the interview that I, I don't, like I said, I don't remember who it was I saw, but he, the guy literally said, they ha- they harass me like every few months and they're always like you know we know you know this you, you know information and like we you need to like get you know come clean with us and come talk to us and i just tell them i'm not interested bro like do your thing i don't want to have anything to do with you guys i know what's going on just leave me alone and he says every few months i'm getting calls from him telling them at, you know make they're checking in on me making sure I'm not doing anything. He said, I'm just trying to go on with my, with my life. But he says, 
the only reason that I don't talk about some of the stuff going on is because they got children and I got people I have to think about, you know. And he's like, but I stay disconnected from everything. I don't want to go to their parties. I don't want to be part of their little clubs, which are, you know, I think he was saying clubs where they wore no clothes. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of these clubs. And so I think that there are people in the industry that are, they know maybe what's going on, but they just want to be disconnected from it, you know. Man, and even talking about that, like going to the parties and everything. I even saw a video of Shaq talking about a guy. He was, uh, Shaq called him a straight arrow or something like that. Huh. Talking about how he didn't, he didn't want to be involved with the, uh, or no, he saw he saw his innocence. Shaq saw his innocence, and wanted to save him from all the things, uh, all the crazy things that they did on the team and stuff. And he so he watched out for him and tried to keep him out of that. But even that makes you wonder, like, what do you mean, like, like he's a grown man, like he can right. he, he can take what care of himself. What right? are you protecting yeah, what him are you from, protecting Shaq? Him from? Yeah, we know and, it's uh, not just the parties and mm -hmm. wild women. It's you're protecting him from something. What are you protecting him from, right. Shaq? And, Shaq, uh, are you so deep in, Shaq, you're just too deep in to where you you can't come out, but you don't want to beat someone to be influenced by that? Is that what, what you're saying? You know? Mm -hmm. Are you too are you too deep into it? That's another thing. Uh he's involved with Baby. Hey, we have the dog joining us. <laughs> so he's involved with the the Freemasons. Yeah. It's kind of a shady organization. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, this is my dog BB right here. Hey, BB, come here, BB, BB. This is BB. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> she is a Make pit bull candy, mix, lab mix, healer mix. She's got all three in her. Ah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the shack and the Freemasons. I remember you talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Wasn't it something like he, the ring he was wearing? He was wearing a ring. Mm -hmm. and you noticed something you were telling me about, oh, have you seen that big old ring he's wearing? You need to yep. do some research into what that what that ring's about, you know? Yeah. I think he'll talk about it, though. He'll talk about how he's a Freemason and stuff. But they're they're very secretive and stuff and believe to, that, that they do. They participate in a lot of rituals as well. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Not me. I I have not been invited, and I don't think I would accept <laughs> nah. it, even if I was. And I'm trying to, uh, uh, it's a t uh, internet personality. I can't, I think it's Aha Vicky or something like that. I can't remember her name. Vicky is her, her name, but she's got a tag that she uses. And she talked about how the same, you know, she was invited to this party. And in the party, she come in and they wanted her, they wanted her to give them, they said, we need your cell phone. You need to sign this contract. And I think they even asked if they could take a sample for blood or something crazy like that. And she said, first of all, you're not getting my phone. I'm not signing any contracts. And uh, and they were kind of upset about it. She said, I stayed at the party for about 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And she says, and then I left. She says, I got out of there. She's like, and, I, and I've stayed like that. I've stayed where I, hey, I, you know, she talks about her faith. And she got an interview with this one lady. You can look it up online. She's in an interview, and in an interview, the lady is trying to do everything she can to undermine her faith, like just come to cutting her in every different way, like this angle, that angle, this question. You could just tell she's trying to get Vicky cornered, and Vicky didn't back down. She's mm -hmm. like, "No, no, I'm not going to back down for what I believe." What like, and she was very respectful to the lady. She's very respectful. She, but she could tell she's not going to back down. She says, "My faith is important to me." And what I believe is important to me, and I'm not selling my soul for. And the lady's like, "What do you mean selling my soul?" And she tried to tell her the lady what the lady already knew. You could tell the lady already knows what she's talking about. She's just asking her a question to get Vicky to say something, mm -hmm. you know. And so there's these parties that they go to that a lot of people have talked about. These parties, you know, I know there was an interview with Adam Sandler and and Jennifer Aniston were t pizza parties, you know, mm. crazy stuff like that, you know, and if you don't know what pizza means, you need to look that up on YouTube, get, do some research and it'll gross you out. Um, has to do with children. There's your clue. But they talked about these parties and uh, there's all kinds of things that go on at these parties. I remember a story in particular. I met, uh, Stephen Baldwin 
Alec Baldwin's brother, and he, you know, he told me about the parties they used to do at the Playboy Mansion, which, I mean, it's at the Playboy Mansion to be expected where they would have these huge orgies and there would be celebrities. And he could name, he said, I could name all the celebrities and you'd know who they are. And they would just have these gigantic orgies and these, these, these meetings in the basement of the Playboy Mansion. So that kind of stuff is not necessarily a cultish. But it still leads into stuff, you know, because if there's that stuff going on, there's other stuff going on, you know. It's not and, a cultish, but that's definitely what the cults do. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they def that's definitely like one of the signs, you know, A, orgies, B, child sacrifice, mm. C, you know, stuff like that, you know. Drinking and, blood. Drinking blood, <laughs> you know, that's, a, yeah, the drinking blood. I mean, we get into that, some of that too, you know, what they do in these things. So um, I saw a, uh, a video just before I came here talking about how they have proof that people in the government were using government money yeah to uh fund their sexual parties <laughs> yeah uh and, uh like people were suing i think they were doing lawsuits claiming lawsuits and uh rightfully so you know yeah <laughs> i don't i yeah. don't want my money going towards that yeah. So if you haven't figured it out yet, we are we have the shovel out right now and we're starting to dig. So I mean <laughs> some of this stuff you're probably going, What? But let me tell you something. We're not saying anything that you can't go out and get on YouTube. You can't do some research and find if but unless yep. they've hit hit a lot of it and you can't, you know, look it up yourself. I mean, it's all out there. It's just how much you know, like Enix said it kinda came to him a lot of it. But I mean, you can follow any of those rabbits and they're gonna lead you to some very dark places and it's probably stuff you don't want to see. You don't, you know, we don't want to be thinking, man, my favorite celebrity might be a child pedophile. My favorite celebrity celebrity or TV influencer music person might be involved in some occultic practices that are more than just a religious belief, but they're actually doing things that are hurting people, you know, mm -hmm. killing people. Uh, so, uh, let's see, we got uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z, oh, two peas in a pod right there, right? Uh, talking about in, they are they are the in. I think I think they're right underneath, probably right underneath the puppeteers. You know, they got a lot of a ton of success, not just in music, but across the board. I mean, now even Jay Z's doing movies mocking mocking Christ, basically. Yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I mean, as far as Beyonce goes, she started out, you know, in the church singing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how most most start and uh you know she's done a completely a 180 pretty much talking about how she has this alter ego sasha fierce which is who she turns into on stage and transforms uh, into yeah transforms into and is not it's no longer beyonce so at the very least maybe not demonic possession but a split personality like it another could be that yeah, too, yeah like a at the very least i lean more towards schizophrenia demonic. <laughs> you know yeah i lean towards that too. i lean more towards demonic uh i saw a video where like her face drastically changes while she's on stage contorts yep yeah it's like all Eyes contorted distort. and stuff which if you look up any real exorcisms like that's what happens right it's the it's the demon trying to hold on <laughs> yep but he's getting yanked out uh which i don't I don't do that a lot. I don't recommend that either, looking up exorcisms. But if you've right. seen it, you know. Uh, but yeah. I don't know if it's people don't want to pretend that world exists or they're scared of it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, if you if you don't believe in the spiritual world, you know, you're... For one, where do you get your... Like, how do you have hope, you know? Right, yeah. Because if we're just body, we're just... There's nothing else. Uh, you know, what do you look what do you look forward to? Right. Cuz one day we're all going to this body's going to stop, this heart's going to stop beating. Yeah. And, and so that day's coming for all of us. Yep. Yep. Everybody everybody has an appointment. Mhm. Mm uh And then comes the judgment. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Uh Mhm. Mm but uh I forgot what I was going to say. Jay-Z. Talking about Jay-Z and, and Jay -Z. Uh, Beyonce. Yep. Jay-Z has been uh, 
he spent a lot of time with that head witch lady of the Satanist mm -hmm. church too. Uh, so he's probably pretty deep in it. If not the, uh, if not with the puppeteers, you know, he's at least doing the Satanist stuff. I mean, his clothing line promotes it. If you ever right. see what he wears, his hoodies and his shirts he wears, there, it's not, he's not <laughs> hiding any of it. <laughs> right. Which there's definitely some shady stuff that goes on with that. I watched a, uh, I watched a documentary about the uh, Temple of Satan, and uh, now there, there's two, there's two divisions basically. It's the ones that do all the crazy weird, stuff. crazy, evil stuff. And then there's the other side of it where they're like, we don't actually believe there's a Satan. Right. We just. More humanism. It's more so humanism, right? Yeah. And we, we just want to, uh, we just want everybody to do whatever they want to do. Be free to do whatever you want to do. Uh, which, but it's funny that they say that. Because they condemn the other side. Right. I was going to say. Would that do the evil stuff? But you just said everybody can do evil. But that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they they want to they want to promote more so uh, peace among everybody. Which how do you get peace if you don't have any law? Or you don't have any rule. Right. Any it just rules. becomes chaos eventually. Where do you where do you gather your morality? You know, but that's that's where they're at. And that's that's more. I think that's more so what Beyonce and Jay Z try to convey that side, even though they're probably involved in the other side, other side if too. not both sides. But yeah, like I believe in myself. I believe in what I can do and the power within myself and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people said, you know, the 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 Anton Lavey, you know, he he believed it was more humanism. They said, you know, but like. I feel like it's very surface level because as you start to get deeper into that, it becomes what the other what the other side is saying. You know, mm -hmm. the you know blood rituals, the child sacrifice, you know the orgies, all that stuff. It becomes what is it that, called when they lay on the table and they like eat an food altar? off of them. Oh, uh, spirit cooking. Spirit cooking. Yeah, spirit cooking. That's yeah, been a they do that's that. a huge thing now. Spirit cooking. Mm -hmm. They call it the parties. You know, and they have the cakes that look just like people, and they eat mm -hmm. they eat it eat the pieces of them. Yes. Yep. A lot of a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. So if it's just I'm believing in myself and stuff like that, then why is it getting all this other stuff? You know, these rituals. I mean, what are you doing a ritual for? You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for something else. You're doing it for some other power. You're doing it for power and influence. Well, who are you doing it to? You know, you know, what's what's giving you that power and that influence, you know? Right. Um so yeah. Yeah, I agree with Beyonce. Jay Z, um, which leads us into our next guy, Kanye West, and that Kanye ha has come out and said, like, you know, he said I helped Jay Z get further along, and I was connected with him, and uh, into where he, you know, his and his life, and he, you know, and now he talks, you know, they all just abandoned him, you know, they left him, but abandoned Kanye when he started, you know, supposedly going off in the deep end, which I think he does on some things. Uh, but I'm going to let Enoch talk about Kanye a little bit, you know. Yeah, so if you watch the Yeezus thing, you know, the Yeezus documentary uh, by, I think his name's Pootie, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a but, uh, crazy name, man. Yeah. But, uh, or Cootie. Uh, but he shows how, you know, they didn't even want him, Jay-Z and them. They didn't, they didn't really want him around. He was just kind of that annoying guy trying to hey listen to my music listen to my beats and then uh <laughs> somebody i don't remember who it was somebody gave him a chance and so that's how he got his start uh with the beat and then he was producing for a while before he started making his own music or before his own music started getting out there yeah didn't i see a, I, he said everybody's coming to me wanting me produce and do this stuff all these people are coming to me but when i'm like hey i can actually i am actually a good artist too i want to promote myself they're like they just cast them to the side. Yeah, yeah. But then they wanted me to help them get bigger and right. mix, you know, all these great beats and mixes was him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I think, uh, I think he's probably had to do some things for sure. Uh, he even says, mm. there's even a video 
of him talking to paparazzi about his mom. Yeah, that was sad when I heard that. I was like, wow. His mom died uh, right around the time, you know, he had that big album with Jay-Z, <laughs> uh, odd, oddly enough. And uh, so years later, he says, well, my mom, you know, she's not here anymore. Talking, And he he had been talking about how people were dying and basically not saying it but saying it like they were sacrifices <laughs> yeah and uh he put his mom in that group so you know who knows what had to happen there what contracts were signed uh but he's probably and it's it's rough because his mom was a big part in the beginning you know and it's kind of crazy that if he agreed to that, you know, uh, or agreed without knowing, either way, it's it's sad. It's a sad situation. Yeah, it seems like when he talks about it, you, it's almost like a sense of guilt on him. It's mm -hmm. bothering him, you know, and he yeah. tries to tell, say, hey, try to tell people, hey, this is what I had to do, and I feel real bad about it. It's almost like it's eating him up. Yeah. Thus may be why he goes off on the deep end sometimes because yeah. he tried to deal with that trauma. Which is why he has all these episodes now where he can't he can't control what he's saying he's saying random stuff go falling into his bi bipolar episodes what mm -hmm. they call him i think he's just trauma got got some spirits messing with him yeah yeah constantly spiritual forces yep yep because when you go to those places you, you can't just get rid of them especially if you don't want to get rid of them you secretly don't want to get rid of them because they bring you all this success, all this, all this stuff, inspiration. They you know, keep you, keep you where you, you're on top, you know, mm -hmm. on top. But yeah, it's he's in a sticky situation. Like even with the Jesus is King stuff, you know, I think he started going down, downhill financially. Probably that's when uh, that was around the time, or that was. That was after, right after he went bankrupt, or he filed for bankruptcy, and uh, I think I think God might have been trying to show him, you know, there's a different way you can do this. And then something else happened along the way because after Sunday service, uh, he started the divorce. Did the did the divorce affect him too? Mm -hmm. But okay. something else. I think there was something else along with that. I think it's because he was losing everything. Cause he was trying to follow God and he didn't really know how. And it was all, it was all kind of rushed, you know? Uh, he didn't, he was consulting. I, I feel like he was probably consulting some big leaders. There's a, there's a big name celebrity pastor, not like, not like mega church pastor, but he's like, he helps celebrities. Mm -hmm. Like he's the chaplain for celebrities. He doesn't, uh, I guess they like him because he doesn't get starstruck and stuff. He's just right, just very just down to help. earth. Yeah. yeah, he can be real with him, probably honest with him. Yeah, and he was he's talking about how he he's he's just trying to be there for Kanye and not be overbearing and stuff because he's I mean he's a grown man. Mm -hmm. You know he can do whatever he wants pretty much. He's got unlimited access to whatever he needs, and uh, he's just trying to be there for him. But I think what he needed in that time, like especially if he was genuinely trying to grow with Christ, he should have he should have like tried to find somewhere where he could go that would give him real advice, real church. But I just don't think he had anything around him to have mm -hmm. that support system, especially with the industry he's in. It's probably not. A ton of good outlets there right probably a lot of people that seem like they're good but once yeah. you start to talk to them kanye seems like the kind of guy he could probably see through someone pretty quick mm -hmm. and see if they're genuine or not you know um i think that's why he clings so hard to, to trump you know because i think you know trump says some crazy stuff sometimes and does some crazy stuff but like the one thing you can never take away is that he he's very uh he was very uh sometimes honest too and very upfront. 
But I think in, a lot of people talked about it in secret. He was very um, real. I think that's why he connected with them so hard. You know, obviously that didn't end up the best in the end. Yeah, they're uh, definitely alike. They both say what's on their mind. Say what's on their <laughs> mind. They put it out there, mm-hmm. you know. I think a Kanye could have benefited from like a person like Mel Gibson. You know, I know uh, Britney Spears went to him when she did her first episode where she shaved her head and then all, off the deep end. And they were asking her like, well, how did you get through that? And she said, I went to Mel Gibson. Oh, wow. And there's several celebrities that have talked about have they gone to him because he's gone off the deep end and he's, you know, a believer now. You know, if you don't know, Mel Gibson was behind the passion of the Christ, you know, that big he movie. Did. Was he the one that did Sound of Freedom? It directed it. He, he might have had a part in there. I'm not sure. He wasn't the one who did it, but he might have had a part in there. He he was he was promoting it, I think, at the beginning. Well, yeah, he might have been helping promote it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but yeah, he he's had an influence. So guys, like, someone like not saying Mel Gibson, but someone like that that could have been has been to those dark places and has come right. out and been like, hey, you know, that has the reputation. You know, that too. has the reputation. Because I I feel like even if if I was like a huge star like Kanye, you know. I'm not listening to everybody. Right. You're going to listen to the people that are, yeah. You, you're either going to listen to someone like that pastor that's influential or someone, you know, that can give him advice You're that, that is not starstruck. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to find someone like that is, that is a star that has been to, through the darkness and of life and whatever else. And, and can be like, man, let me just tell you what I did and what helped me and can be a friend to you and not judge you and not tell all your business to everybody. Man, that's hard to do in Hollywood, mm-hmm. you know, because, that right there, man. That yeah. paper, man. Everybody's looking for a story, you know. TMZ, where's TMZ at? You know, yep. looking for a story, you know. They love that money. They want that money, man. So we'll we'll put it out there, even if it's detrimental. It's kind of like with Hollywood. If things get too bad, if you ever notice things get too, the heat gets too much on one person, the others will start teaming up like wolves, you know, or some something crazy will happen where they will get cut from a film or they'll get removed here, or you know, the role they'll all of a sudden get. I honestly think they'll get a criminal charge out of nowhere, you know. Uh, so we talked about, you know, several c- celebrities. So let's get into one that I think is in the big one right now. The Miss Taylor Swift. <laughs> let's dive into Taylor a little bit. Everybody loves Man. Taylor. You know, that's what everybody says. Oh, I love Taylor. A lot of people like Taylor. And so what we're going to talk about with Taylor, you know, we just think with her, yeah, even the dog likes Taylor, see? <laughs> but uh, I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan. I hope to break any hearts. I'm not. I've just dumped the music style, not my kind of music style. But, man, if we've seen anything recently with Taylor Swift, we've seen an as- ascension to stardom like no other. And we've seen a lot of stuff that's surrounding her that, in in my opinion, and I think, you know, Enoch might have similar opinions, there's something else going on there with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, going to Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Uh, she is one of the more interesting because she's not she's not out front with the Satanist stuff, but she's definitely the she's definitely the kind of artist that will say what needs to be said that will give that will get her. The most acceptance uh like she's not she's not huge on the love is love but she said it you know mm-hmm. and uh that's not that's not a part of her marketing like ariana grande where where that's her main mm-hmm. push uh and then she's uh she's been caught saying some things and then she deleted it and uh some weird pictures of her wearing some hats, which you might be able to find that. I don't know if you can still find those pictures, but, uh, and, uh, that she posted on her Instagram. And, uh, basically, you know, there's some evil things. Cause why would she delete it? You know? Right. <laughs> there's some evil. If things you're going so excited, if this is something you believe, why would you backtrack on it? Mm-hmm. I wonder if she puts it out there, sees the reaction. If it starts getting a ton of likes, keep it. But if it starts getting mixed reviews, pull it, you know, because yep. we don't need that. Probably the weirdest video I've seen is she gets the people to chant chant something about uh, 
bring the demons or something like that. I don't know what I don't remember what she said exactly, but and then she Yikes. tweeted about it. <laughs> tweeted about it, talking about, oh, so is this the new chant that we're doing now? That's the uh I'm So she I'm here tweeted for about it. herself saying the chant or Well the so the fans were saying the chant at one of her concerts. Hello everyone, how you doing today? This is part two of the series on aliens, giants, Hollywood, the music industry. I'm here with my guest Enoch Johnson. We are continuing where we left off last time. Uh, the video actually cut a little short last time, so we're doing a part two. Uh, we're going to dive right back into it. Uh, so excited for you to be here again today. We are in lovely Sherman, Texas. I had a different location, as you can tell, and I'm here with Enoch. And we're going to just kind of continue where we left off before. Um, we were talking about uh, Taylor Swift, man, and uh, man, we were talking about the um, when when going to her concerts and stuff. Uh, the, all the, these chants that were happening, and uh, I, I guess uh, you have, you got the microphone, so you know, tell us about yep. a little bit more about that, Enoch. Yep, fully functional. Dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> um, no chords at all, man. This is this is like cordless. Yeah, cordless. Uh, as far as the chance, uh, it was something along the lines of bring on the demons or something like that. Yeah. Uh, she had been, she had been talking about, um, uh, like her song, uh, with the witches. Yeah. I remember that in the, and, that uh, music video that came out too. Yeah. And, uh. Some it somehow it correlates, and uh, they were chanting "Bring on the demons." And she tweeted out, she tweeted out that, uh, "Oh, is this the new chant that we're going to start doing at yeah. all the shows now?" And uh, uh, people were commenting on it and everything. And it didn't really, it didn't really go anywhere past that, but uh, it it kind of went a little viral, and uh, I didn't really understand how that matched her marketing but for some reason she decided to comment on that so and that's like the double-edged sword of like the media today like you know there's a camera everywhere i mean even as we sit here you know recording today there are probably cameras that are in people's houses that are watching you know in front of their houses and there's cameras that are on telephone poles and cameras that are on lights we live in a world where everybody's got their own personal cameras on personal computers and so like with social media and stuff like that it if you post something, boom, someone's screenshotting it. It's like it's already out there. You can't get rid of it. And that's probably with you know, with that, she put it out there. It's already out there. Someone screenshotted it. They showed everybody what she said. And it wasn't getting the hits she thought. It wasn't getting the momentum. And so uh, do you think maybe Taylor Swift, like I think we might have talked a little bit about this last videos, but like she's kind of in into the occult, into, you know, uh, some of the satanic stuff we, we've seen that before with some like her music videos and stuff but do you think that maybe she just dabbles in that stuff and maybe she's just curious and kind of trying different things I think she's definitely she definitely um, is very subliminal about it uh, which would have you to think like why why wouldn't she just come out, you know, and say it like right. a lot of people are now, like it's real normal. Uh, but who knows, you know, maybe she isn't. Maybe she is just curious. Maybe she's not all the way in it. Who knows? Uh, we don't have any significant we, proof, but we it, don't have all the details. It definitely makes you wonder, like, why would why would all these things happen? Like we talked about last time with the hats. Uh, the the witch imagery and, uh, you know they say it's all whimsical but it's it's it seems like it's a trend you know it keeps going so why why if it's just all fun and innocent why why you delete certain things that would make you think otherwise you know right yeah and even with her new album release I mean I've heard like so I think with her newest album that just came out, there was a line that was drawn, right? 
And then her new album has come out. I've read some of the lyrics. It's a, it's kind of dark compared to like normal Taylor Swift stuff. I think she's kind of stepped over a boundary right here to, to test the waters a little bit in her creativity. But the way it, she's come across, it's almost like, a, I don't know, when I was reading the lyrics and I was listening to some of the stuff, almost seems like a different person completely. Maybe she's trying to rebrand her. Maybe she's trying to do something different. But I feel like with this new image she's come out with, I feel like she's almost like she may lose a part of her fan base because of just, especially like the young kids and stuff like that, because it's very, I mean, it's explicit content on the album. She's dropping F-bombs. She's dropping, I, she, I don't know if she drops GD or whatever, but I, I mean, she's she's just cursing all throughout the album. Explicit content label on the album uh, and on some of the songs. And it kind of makes me wonder like, what happened to the old country Taylor Swift, you know, real everybody, you know, happy vibes, you know, but uh, songs about guys, you know, breakups and stuff like that, that everybody was kind of like, oh, Taylor Swift, she's cool, you know. Um, it seems like she's becoming something else, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, and I don't know if that's for the better, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a wise uh, marketing decision, uh, but. It, it makes sense in some some ways like her her audience that started with her is definitely older now so yeah. it would make sense as to why she would want to go a little more adult uh and uh you know as far as the some of the anti or not anti but not the not pro god stuff uh that she says in the in the new album uh, that's just I think that just comes with the main the more mainstream you get. Yeah you know, uh, That's what people want to hear She's Ultimately, tough. they don't they don't uh, I would say the majority of people that listen to Taylor Swift's music is probably not uh, Christian like Christian base uh, Although a lot of Christians do listen to Taylor Swift which you know teach their own I guess. Yeah. Yeah, not like I think I was saying in an earlier video, not my style. Not I my personally style. wouldn't recommend it, no. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend uh, listening to Taylor Swift if you're a uh, Christian. Well, it's becoming more obvious, like, in the actual concerts and the music videos now that there's something darker mm -hmm. behind the message that she's presenting. It's not just the, the breakup songs anymore, you know, and that, you know, that acoustic-driven Taylor Swift style that she had, you know, and not what we're accustomed to, you know, hearing you know you can't really put taylor swift you used to not be able to put her in the same category art on other artists that do go deeper into that she's a kind of her own style you know but it seems like now there's a, definitely a change i will say with her the one thing you think talking about not having good marketing not maybe not the best marketing decision but i i will say with her i think she's made a bet she's made a, a better transition unlike miley cyrus who just kind of like alienated all of her young fan base yeah, went straight just into straight that. into just extreme you know music and, and you know dancing with hardly no clothes on and performing Miley didn't have much of a, a transition but now she's kind of coming her own where she is popular again and and for a lot of people I and I like some of Miley Cyrus's songs she's not someone that I have my playlist all the time but I think she's a good singer and stuff like that but I but I do think that well you know with Taylor Swift there's definitely something going on and she influences a lot of people so i mean there's a lot of people that follow taylor swift and that's the thing i mean with all those people that are following her do you think that i mean it seems like it to me but what do you think you think a lot of people are susceptible to just go wherever taylor swift goes you know if she has a certain attitude a certain mindset yeah 100 percent. and uh a lot of uh you know a lot of uh how do i say this not all of her stuff is just debaucherous or whatever you right. want to say. Like it's not, it's not all anti God or not, not not pro God or whatever. Uh, so, like you can definitely, you can definitely pull some value out of it. I'm sure. Oh yeah, but, yeah. Uh, as far as the negative directions that she goes in, I I could definitely see the majority of like even the thought processes thought processes uh that the songs go in like you can see the culture shifting to that that way uh 
like men are not smart or uh, all men are no good. All men are They're no good. They're all gonna good. break your heart. They're all gonna break your heart, right? That kind of that kind of uh, connotation, I guess. Like a jaded, right? Angry, a little jaded, a little angry. Um, but there's also good themes that I've heard about. I haven't listened to the album. Sorry to yeah, the Taylor either. Swift fan. I just read through the lyrics, so I did read through the lyrics, and I, I was noticed, very surprised. Yeah, the change. I know some diehard fans, and there's some good themes in there. I'm sure. Uh, I've heard that she talks about her healthy relationship, quote unquote, healthy relationship that she has now, and uh, hopefully, a lot of younger, younger ladies and whoever else is listening to it can uh, aspire towards that having healthy relationships and not toxic ones like she's had in the past. <laughs> yeah, I think those. I think you can take good out of any kind of music you listen to, right. like. I'm a diehard, you know, Metallica fan. I love Metallica. But for me to say, oh, Metallica is this positive, upbeat, just, I mean, they're upbeat, but positive, inspirational. I think it's different. I, I, I know that there are some songs in Metallica I don't like, you know, because of the negative connotation. But the music and the way they, they come across and the period of time they were in my life, I like the music. I like the driving lyrics. I like, you know, the, I like the, the, some of the stuff they talk about and they do hit some issues in some of those songs I mean there's they talk about depression they talk about alcoholism they talk about suicide they talk about um, uh, they talk about being in foster care you know and being and being abused as a kid they, they hit some of these issues that people go through and I think that's why people can relate to them because the songs are so they, they hit a, a, a large range of topics now it all, may not always be positive but again you know they're not like they're not a Christian band. You know, they're they uh, James Hetfield's mother was a believer, but I think he's kind of taking an anti stance against that. But he doesn't go around just saying, you know, I I hate religion, I hate God. But he but he definitely some of his music is in that way of that vein where he has this anger that you can see underneath it. But if you look at the music and say, just listen to the music, listen to the, you know the lyrics and some of the songs, it can be inspirational in a certain type of way. Right. You know, a lot of metal out there, hard rock, heavy metal, a lot of rap out there. Pump you up, man. You feel good. It's, you know, it doesn't just make you just want to hit the streets. You know, it just it just get it drives, you know, and I think it's, it, music drives us. Yeah. And so, like, we're talking about Taylor Swift. Uh, we know we hit on her a little bit about, you know, the music. I would just say, you know, if you love Taylor Swift and you're into Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift can do no wrong or maybe just like her songs. I just say take a closer look at the lyrics, at the videos. Think about the way it's influencing you and what the message is behind the music, you know. I mean, because you're getting these concerts that people are going to. It's not, we haven't dive into this, but yeah, but the concerts some of these people are going to, where they're having memory loss. They're not even remember like details of the concert. Some of the people are saying stuff like they felt like really strange and weird, like presence come over them, like a darkness come over them. But you got to start questioning, what is this? You know, don't just play it off. Like there's stuff actually happening in these concerts. And, uh, you know, like the images, like we talked about in an early video, popping up on the screens, you know. Yes, they may be your favorite artist, but you also got to think they may not believe the same way you do or do the same things you do or live the same life. They, and and being an artist, they're going to try to influence you, you know, in the in the way they believe life, you know, in the way they do things. Not all of them do. Some of them believe certain things, you know, like I would say like Stevie Nicks of uh, Fleetwood Mac. I mean, she's she's a, a professed witch, but you can kind of tell there's there's this this airiness she has about her. This, you know, her song's talking about spells and magic, but I don't think she pushes it on anybody. She just puts it on her music and the way she lives her life. I've heard when you go to the concerts, I've had friends tell me she literally looks like she's floating across the stage, like her legs aren't even moving. But they never, the people who have gone to our concerts have said that it's not like they don't feel like she was trying to influence them in any way. It's like she was doing her thing and not trying to influence. But I think today we live in, I'm not saying she's not influencing, but the world we live in today, artists are definitely trying to influence you towards a certain way of thinking. And I think Taylor Swift could be one of those artists, you know. So we're gonna jump right into our next person. Just keep this keep this ball rolling, keep it hot. Ryan Garcia, man. <laughs> man. Enoch. Let's just let's dive right into that, man. What tell us 
about Ryan Garcia and everything that's been going on and your thoughts about it. What do you think about this guy, man? Um, he's definitely he's definitely been in the media a lot lately. Uh, he's at this point since the last time we've talked. He he's reminded me a lot of Kanye, uh, and hopefully he doesn't take the same direction as Kanye is right now. Uh, but uh, he's a professed Christian. Uh, I would say definitely in the earlier days he was a lot more humble and like pretty reserved and like he still had a confidence about him, but it was it was healthy. Uh, went viral for the for the uh what's it called uh the punch punch to the gut <laughs> oh yeah i forget what it's called but with the pad because he's a he's a real heavy hitter um but uh he's been revealing a lot of these things are almost confirming mm-hmm. like because he's a big he's pretty big in influence as far as uh you know, numbers would say he's got probably a million followers on social medias. And, uh, he knows a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that are we would consider celebrities. And, uh, so his word, <clears throat> when he says these things, it holds a lot of weight. And he's been tweeting a lot uh, about certain what people would call conspiracies. Uh, Bohemian Grove. Uh, he said he's been there and uh, that. Yeah. I feel like the, the attacks, the things that have come against him when he starts saying this stuff, makes you wonder. You know? Right. Yep. Yep. He says that he he went to Bohemian Grove and they they uh, tied him up and uh, told him uh, to do what they say or they were going to hurt him and his family and all these things. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember all the details because it's been a while since is that but uh uh he he just had a fight recently yep and uh he won the fight uh he was overweight so he wasn't able to go for the belt but he won uh, the fight fair and square he won the fight knocking down like two or three times oh yeah he yeah he pretty much dominated the fight um but now they're saying that uh, he passed for some drug. I don't remember what the yeah, drug was. It was just was. some random. I've never yeah. even heard of it, but it's a legal drug, and I'm thinking. Yeah, he passed for some drug, and this was a couple of weeks after the fight, probably. Right. And so now they're trying to tarnish his record, uh, which makes you wonder. Like, he's been saying all these things in the media and stuff. Like, is there correlation there? I don't know. You would think if someone was trying to not bring attention to something, when someone brings stuff out into the open, whether it be a conspiracy theory or a certain way of looking at life, you would think that that to keep it on the down low, you wouldn't come against it in a big way. Right. But it's almost like it's almost like a little bit of I call it insanity because it's like the moment you come at Ryan Garcia, don't you realize like it just makes you look like there is something going on, especially when you come out that heavily. Yeah, like it's a retaliation. As a retaliation, like, because he's been saying stuff, instead of just being like, he doesn't know what he's talking about, he's crazy, that would be the better way to do it, but it doesn't seem like, it's almost like the, the hand, the, the, the cards are being shown of the people that are coming against him, and they're it's being shown what they have, you know, in poker. We know what their hand is, but they're not holding the cards close, you know, they're just revealing it all. Sometimes that works, but it, sometimes it backfires. You know, it's true. So, um, but yeah, from what I've saw with uh, Ryan Garcia, I mean, I do think like what you were saying, uh, there's a little bit of that Kanye factor in there a little bit where it's sometimes he says stuff and you're wondering a little bit like, are you okay? But then again, like some people say it could be the trauma of what he went through and he's not knowing how to express it and right. really say it. And the fact that he has had all these people coming against him, you know. Yeah, he's a young guy. I think we're around the, I think we're around the same age. So, you know, who knows what, 
what he has access to as far as uh, counsel. And they have to do it the way they do it, I guess. But it would make more sense to do it kind of like subtly, but then come straight at him because it, it could just it could back like totally backfire, and he could just become even more popular. And right. then, then they got a then they built a monster, you know, kind of like Kanye, you know, yeah. just becomes more popular. It's not like it. I, I think Kanye's di- reputation has been hurt a lot by just better stuff he's doing, not as much as people coming out against him. So, but uh, yeah, Ryan Garcia, that that's a hot topic issue right there. Yep. I'm pulling for him because he seems like a pretty cool guy and he genuinely seems a little scared on some of those videos. He seems like something is going on. Maybe maybe some of it may be made up. Maybe, maybe it's all true. But but it just seems crazy that the way he's come about it. So Yep. Yeah, when you start digging into these these celebrities and stuff and you start thinking, man, there's something more to this story, you know? Yeah, so, definitely all the <clears throat> all the Bohemian Grove stuff like He's not the only celebrity that's talked about it. And, oh, uh, no, no, he's not. It's like, at what point do we do we say, okay, maybe we should look into this? But <laughs> well, like, what is it? Really... A, 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 is it ASAP Rocky? Is that how you say his name? ASAP Rocky. Yeah, I mean, what, ha- what happened with him when he started to, like, talk about stuff or, or started to come out with stuff? All of a sudden, family members are, it's like, oh, his yeah. family starts dying, you know? People start getting killed. Yeah, every, every album I heard. I don't know this for sure, but I've heard that every album that he's released, he lost a significant family member, which goes back to like the the rituals and stuff that we were talking about. Like, who knows? Like, why, when does that? When do we look into it to where this might not be a coincidence? You know? Well, there's so many artists coming out and saying it now, mm-hmm. and some of them may not be the biggest stars. I mean, you we talked about Justin Bieber coming out talking about the 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 sexual stuff that has happened to him in the past that he won't mention names because he wants to protect his family but it's the fact that like there is something going on you know right. why are these people coming out why would they damage their reputation to come out and say this I think they want to get it off their chest they want to like I gotta I feel better if I talk about this and let people know and maybe I can get some help you know bring yep. awareness to it you know so it's wild you know we live in a world with uh, AI now, or sometimes what is real, what is not real. But I think where you can tell what's real is when it starts to come out, you start getting more information and it just keeps coming out. And, and then more people that talk about it. Then and it makes sense. And it makes sense, logical sense. Like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense, you know. Like with Kanye and his mother, you know. That makes sense, you know, why he's just kind of all over the place, you know. The way he thinks and betrayed by so a lot of people, you know. Turned his, he literally helped these people get to stardom and they just turned their back on him. You know? So, uh, and, and what, so we talk about, another thing I want to talk about is uh, kind of shift, uh, shift the topic a little bit from them is I feel like in the media, and I don't know if you've noticed, is, is a lot of the messages in cartoons and the media, stuff that's aimed towards children a little bit like that, have you noticed the shift of it's just being almost like some of the stuff is like even in cartoons, TV shows, uh, commercials, it seems to be like this perversion or this this vileness to it or this um, there, that there's a message behind it to try to get close to children in not a healthy way. I don't know if you've noticed that even with cartoons, you know, and, and anime animation. Yeah, shows. in the. Uh in the history of, you know, a lot of civilizations that went went under or got real bad, went evil. Uh, like they always go for the kids. It's always something with the kids. They end up, you know, sacrificing kids. And I, I think that's what they, what they want to do. They want to uh, pervert everything as much as they can. Uh, Cause it's all, it's all under a, a spirit or a principality, like what the Bible says, uh, I believe. Yeah. And um, uh, as far as getting the kids to believe, because they're the future. So, like, if you get them to believe in, you know, uh, gender isn't gender is fluid, or uh, uh, what else did they go for? Like, sex should be. Uh, between whoever, wherever, whenever. 
Well, you, you talk know? about the love is love, which, you know, yeah, love is love. Honestly, whatever you want, whatever way you want to live your life, that's your choice. Especially in America, it's a free country. You can live your life. You can choose your sexual preference. You can choose your identity. The issue is, is when you start to push it on people and especially children, when they're at an age where they're developmentally, they should only be focusing on being a kid. Mm-hmm. trying to be a kid trying to live their life they're not shouldn't be thinking about adult things about you know these certain topics they right. should be trying to live their life and then like twisting things you know aiming you know at what what is it like the term they throw around minor attracted people now you know like that's just pedophilia that's not that's just grown people trying to get with children right. you know and so they start to push that that narrative you know I think in the culture today you know and uh, push it on kids and stuff. And it, honestly, I think it's just confusing kids, you know, because, um, you know, what does it say? Until you reach the mid 20s, your mind is not fully developed. I'm not saying that people aren't in their early 20s aren't mature and have or aren't smart and can think. What I'm saying is that is the what they have determined that your brain at 25 is an adult brain. Finally, it, it settles in and this is the way your personality is and how you're going to think. Before then, like literally a teenager's brain is mush. Mm-hmm. I mean, one minute they're happy. They're, oh, I love the world. I love this. Or kids too, you know. Next minute they're sad. Oh, it's terrible. My girlfriend broke up with me. My life is over, you know. Or, or I, I ate the wrong meal. Or I didn't wear the right clothes. Or, or I just feel bad because, you, mom, you, you looked at me the wrong way or something. They're just all over. The, and the next moment, they love everybody. And, you know, it's just we all went through that. It's just the, the hormones raging, you know. Yep. And you're trying to keep that in control. And then you have to deal with all this other influence that's coming through the media. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about that? Um, yeah, definitely. It definitely influences how they handle certain situations because you, you look all over. Uh, like even in, I hate to say it, but even in sports, like grown men, like complaining the whole the whole game like they're just crying and whining yeah, about weird. things that don't go their way like any sport you look in like that's 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 the norm now which i mean it could be handled better uh but so you think men have stepped you think men in general have stepped back a little bit as far as maturity definitely in that light i would say so yeah uh as far as because that's that's what the kids pay attention to the most like when they're when they're out there in the oh, action a temper tantrum and yeah it's like oh i can throw a temper tantrum yeah i can do that too like they think that's a it's almost like they look at it as an important part of the game now versus occasionally you get upset with the call because it doesn't go your way or whatever but now it's like every play there's somebody getting Why somebody getting upset or yeah. someone flopping falling yeah. over like they broke their arm the next minute they're you know, draining threes and you're no, just the like, over exaggeration of all yeah. of it. It's it's all well. It's like the guy, the old school NBA players, like, oh, you guys couldn't play with us. Yeah, like you know, we have like you see them busted, you know, orbital sockets or you know, blood coming down their mouth, their teeth are missing, and they're just, I right, put me back in, coach. I'm ready, you know. And you, they're not over there complaining to the official every day, body checking each other. I remember Ewing body checking Shaq, just bam, throwing his elbow. And I'm thinking that's a foul today every time, hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, even the even the more extreme examples like it's like murder and uh, just like killing people is more. It's more. Uh, what's the word? It's like uh, we're, we're more desensitized to it yeah. because it's all over. Like even at a young age, like it's it's introduced like in the Disney movies. Uh, some something someone dies, important, an important character dies. And so it's like even kids are introduced to death early. Right. Which is like, man, like 50 years ago, probably that wasn't the case. Right. That wasn't a normal thing. And now, like, it's all in the movies and video games and everywhere. So it's... The line of morality keeps moving. Yeah, you know? it keeps, keeps getting pushed. Where do we put the line at? You know, we just keep moving it. And uh, I think they move it in the name of um, acceptance. You know, oh, we just accept this, we accept that. But, but then I'm like, but then where do we draw the line of what is, what is not right? You know? Yeah, yeah, it's to the point where you can see someone actually get murdered on camera like just 
from a couple clicks on your phone, you can see somebody oh, yeah. get murdered. Yeah, they used to have these videos that I would, I'd see at the video store. They were like these, basically these videos that would show actual deaths. And uh, and I remember I was like, I'd, I'd watch them. And after I watch them, I just felt so strange. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's just common, you know. Yep. I mean, they recreate it. They're not actually like killing this person, but they're recreating like scenes, but they're almost just as gruesome, you know, desensitized to it. So, yeah. And if parents, you know, if the parents, they're not paying attention or they're not really involved in that way, like a kid can see anything, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the downfall of uh, te technological advancements. But, you know, I think that's the, the key that parents, the parents have to be involved ultimately. Right. For, for all and those be things. be there when the kid needs to talk, you know, not right. stuck in their own world. You know, when the kid needs to like, they're going to be asking those questions in those early developmental years. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's this about? Hey, what's that about? You know? Because I think uh, at some point they're going to be exposed to it probably before they need to be exposed to it. Not that there's some things that people just shouldn't be exposed to, but that's right. that's the society that we live in now. So it's it, it needs to be there needs to be that that relationship between the parent and the kid, you know, like I agree. To be able to talk about these things. Yeah, because if you can have that conversation, you know, even with my own, you know, nephew and niece, I, I, I try to have conversations with them now. Sometimes they don't understand what I'm saying, but it still don't matter. You still need to have the conversation with them because they'll come back later and ask, what did I mean? And then you can begin to talk to them about it. Um, we're going to dig into that a little more, but we're going to hit a couple more artists. That was just the tip of that iceberg. We're going to circle back around to that in a minute. But well, I was going to tell a story about, uh, and then I'll ask Enoch a few more questions about some high-profile people. But, like, there was a story that came out about Matthew Perry. And everybody knows Matthew Perry. He was on the show Friends. Uh, he died recently. and uh, But he came out with an autobiography. And he talks about it in his autobiography, you know, talking about being in the music, the, I mean, being in Hollywood, being influential, being under the camera. This is why I think, like, spirituality is important. You know, I especially believe, like, in my, my life, like, Christian spirituality is where I, you know, that's what I go for. But, like, I believe it's important because Matthew Perry came back and said, like, literally, he prayed a prayer for the Lord to make him popular. And he prayed this prayer, and he said, I got popular. And he said, but it ended up being the worst thing that happened to me because the more popular I became, you think I would be the happier I was. But he said, but because I wasn't rooted and grounded in who I was, the the more mis more miserable I became. You know, I became more and more miserable. And he said, life was, and I just, you know, I turned to drugs, I turned to alcohol. You know, didn't want to, you know, didn't want to live anymore. And he talks about it in his autobiography. So I think, you know, I think there's a big identity issue in our country today. And I think Matthew Perry had his identity, you know, moment, his crisis where it, no matter how popular you are, you know, when you don't have that s stable, st you don't have stability inside of you, and there's no telling where you could go, you know. And um, I think he ended up passing away from complications of stuff. I, I don't remember the exact details, but it's kind of sad to see that. But he did get that message back out there that, hey, you know, there just because you're just because these you see it all the time with like movie stars and tv stars just because they're popular and just because they're some of those people seem like the most depressed people seem like they got the most stuff going on you know and uh i think counseling is a great thing i think but it seems like you you have a really high rate of people in that industry going to like counseling and therapy and trying to find you know the answers so it's like they get to the top but the answers aren't at, aren't at the top you know, wherever they're looking, they're, they're trying to look for those answers, you know, mm -hmm. and they're not finding them, you know. So, because um, we know the answers are not found in popularity. It, it sustains for a little while. They're not found in everybody liking you and yeah. everything working out. That sustains for a little bit, but eventually you have to find, you know, that ground, you know, that we both, I think, believe is in Christianity. You know, we find that, that ground, ground root. So, um I, I think we've talked about uh what is it the matt rife contract did we did we go into that matt rife oh man yeah i almost forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah i was yeah, like yeah. okay we got matt rife contract and uh name of yamini is that her name i think mm, i don't remember now okay but, but uh, matt rife contract yeah yeah basically uh a couple of comedians went to uh a meeting uh i don't remember his name now but 
he's telling the story on, I think it was TikTok or maybe Twitter, uh, that he went to this meeting to dis- to discuss the uh, some opportunities for tour and uh, a, a bigger contract because they had been kind of blossoming in the comedy sphere. Mm-hmm. And uh, they go to this meeting and basically they're presented a deal and the only way they could finalize the deal is if they would do some favors, some sexual favors <laughs> for uh, the people presenting the deal. And uh, this comedian says, uh, as soon as he heard that, he, he heads for the door <laughs> saying, no way, not me. I'm out. I'm not doing anything for you guys. And he says he turns around to say his last goodbye, and he already sees this this other comedian uh, starting to do the favors for the people that presented the deal. And the comedian that he was talking about was Matt Rife, which is a he's a pretty famous. He kind of came out of nowhere, kind of blew up overnight. Yeah, yep. Overnight, yep. Uh, overnight success, and so it makes you wonder, you know, maybe maybe there was something to that. Who knows? Uh, I wouldn't put it past. I don't think he's. I don't think he's a professed Christian, so yeah. it wouldn't. It wouldn't make me second guess it at all if he had, you know, same sex attractions or whatever was going on there. Uh, but who knows? Yeah. He reminds me of Dane Cook 2.0, like Dane a little Cook. bit. Yeah. I think Dane mean, Cook's definitely funnier, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen a little bit of Matt Wright stuff, Wright and I was like, yeah. I think he appeals to ladies a lot. Yeah, I think he really appeals to the ladies a lot with this comedian, because I, I just watch it and I'm like, not really funny, but that's just my personal preference, I guess. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of improv, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen, I haven't looked at like a whole special of his, but I've seen clips. And- but again, coming out of nowhere, right, and becoming just huge. Yeah, like that's what no Cat big, Williams talked about. Yeah, like yeah, mm-hmm. Cat Williams, like we were saying earlier, he talked about uh, in an earlier video. We talked about Cat Williams saying industry plants, man. They just it's like songs that you see on the charts. You're like, where did this artist even come from? You know. Well, I'm not saying they're all doing stuff, but I am saying that some stuff is being done. You know, <laughs> and it's not shaking hands. And hugging necks, it's going on to a lot more than that, you know. Who knows? Who knows? You know, we don't know all the details. This is all like I go back again. This is all just speculation. We we weren't in any of these rooms. We weren't in any of these rooms. We don't know what happened. Disclaimer: We don't know what happened. But by us doing our own research and our own, you know, digging, we've seen some stuff that we're like. There may be an elephant in the room, right. and no one wants to talk about it, you know? So, yeah, Matt Rife, that's crazy stuff, man. Um, uh, what do you think about people in the music industry being framed, blackmailed, so that they fall in line? I mean, we're kind of on that. Kind of on that train right now? Yeah. Uh, what are my thoughts about it? Yeah. I mean, it's wrong, for sure. Uh, I, I would imagine it happens in some capacity more more than you would like for it to happen, I'm sure, for your favorite uh, celebrity. But uh, you think it might be for some people when they see that happen, they're like, "Oh man, yes, yeah, please def- not." Definitely puts a damper on things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but as frequently as it's happening, who knows? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not, definitely not cool. Well, like when you're watching a watch, I was watching a Quentin Tarantino uh, uh, video the other day, and uh, in one of the guys, I guess he's co-producer or something. I want to say it's Epstein, Epstein, or it's no, no, Har- Weinstein. Or it's one of those guys. I can't remember who it is. One of those known involved in like trafficking, involved in in some very illegal stuff. He's in the in the the. Um, credits you know i'm like wait a minute <laughs> i'm sure uh, when quentin tintino made this film maybe he knew maybe he didn't but i'm sure that if he knew that, that guy was involved back then you know he probably would have been like oh, i'm sorry bro you know 
But I'm sure that like we were talking about, people, there's probably celebrities that know stuff, but they just ain't saying nothing. They're just kind of like, ah, I'm not part of it. Or I, if it happens, let it happen. I'm just not going to be very vocal about it. I'm just going to do my thing. And There's got to be if, it, if it's what's going on. But there's something going on. Stuff going on. Too many people are coming out about it. But uh, yeah, falling in line, trying to keep these guys, uh, trying to keep them from uh, spreading too much information. Or they can frame someone. See, I feel like if you got like a whole bunch of celebrities together and they all got together and like said, hey, this is happening, and they were genuine about it, they could stop some of this stuff. But what happens is you get one come out and the others are like, Ugh, no, mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything. So, Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're actually in part three of this video, so uh, we're glad you could join us again. I'm here with my special guest, Enoch Johnson. We are talking about aliens, giants, Hollywood, the music industry, and God. So we're back again. Ain't man, how you doing? Pretty good. Doing pretty, pretty good. good. I always enjoy coming out here. It's lovely. Nice weather. Not, not too bad. Good overcast. Yeah, I know. It's really nice. We've had, we've had a lot of rain. Yeah. It's been freaking nuts. Still got some little bugs out here, ants everywhere, but you know, it's, it's nature for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we're back for the for part three, and uh, we're going to dive a little bit more into the spiritual side of things. We've been kind of talking about what's on the surface a little bit. Uh, I want to start it off actually with a verse from the from from the good book, uh, Proverbs twenty nine and two. It says, "When the righteous rule, the people rejoice; but when the wicked rule, the people mourn." The people mourn. Uh, and 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 so what I want to say is, I think we're seeing a little bit of what is what is unseen is starting to bleed into the natural world a little bit um, with, with the way our culture has been going kind of the center of morality is kind of like decreased. Uh, what, what used to be seen as uh, you know, like vile or detestable or, or, or something that was actually bad, like something that people would look at you and go, why does that person do that? You know, that's not a good thing to do. It's detrimental. In our culture today, I feel like some of that stuff's like more widely accepted now. So I think we we see in what we're actually seeing as the spiritual world bleeding into our natural. What do, what do you think about that? You think that's the case? Yep, hundred <clears throat> percent. And um, it's getting to the point where uh, it's not not able to hide. You know, right? Uh, we're 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 just more aware of things now. I think because of the internet and right everything like that we're more exposed to what's going on not just where we are in our circle but all over the world and uh yeah it's it's starting to be undeniable so much evidence of things uh <clears throat> even with like archaeologists finding stuff uh they found the ark they mm -hmm. found uh the chariots underneath the water yep. where they drowned the egyptians uh they found a bunch of stuff. The 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 stones, thirteen stones lined up, huge, huge stones. A uh, bunch of stuff. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's like the the more the more they keep digging, the more they find. You know, All to right. say, hey, we maybe the good book is right. You know, maybe maybe that is maybe it is right. Maybe it's wrong. You know, maybe we're maybe what what, what we believe today. Maybe we're just way off base. But it, it seems to be that like. You know, that stuff that happened, you know, especially in the Old Testament, people that they say didn't exist. Well, now there's stuff coming out to say they do exist, you know, that they, they did. They did exist. You know, there's get it's like, OK, so like you said, the chariots. OK, that actually did happen. They did. There was some chariots there, you know, uh, the shawl of Jesus. OK, they did find his shawl, you know, uh, which is interesting about that, that they found that the, the actual blood on his shawl was still living. Like the cells were still moving and the scientists, they can't figure it out. They're baffled. Like, how is this possible? How are these cells still, you know, alive? It's like, well, he is the living word, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do agree. It's getting undeniable. The world that we live in today, uh, uh, we, we see things in our culture. Like, like you're saying, cameras are everywhere. Video cameras are everywhere. There's really nowhere to hide. It's almost like getting to the point where 
you try to do something in secret, there's probably a camera somewhere seeing you somewhere. If not a camera, there's probably a satellite looking at you somewhere. So it's it's getting to the point where it's like getting harder and harder to, to hide things, you know. Right. Um, I think that that was the purpose, you know, so that, you know, the gospel could reach the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's part of it. So uh, some examples of what we've seen, like especially Hollywood and the music industry and the entertainment industry. Uh, we see, you know, videos of uh, where people where eyes are changing shape, you know, and they're shape shifting. And, and people would say, well, no, nah, it's probably something going on with the camera. But clearly you can tell, like, if you look in the background, nothing's changing. It's just one thing. Their eyes will change shape. Um, I'm not saying that they're a lizard person, but I'm saying something's going on. And people's faces are distorting when in concerts and changing to, you know, like literally contorting. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in one of Beyonce's concerts, her face literally contorts like that and her face changes. Uh, but they're, they're saying, oh, it's just the way the camera moves. It's just an angle. And... You know, there's always going to be an excuse because there are people that real, that think only by logic are always going to be like, well, that's because of this. But those with like spiritual eyes can see, no, there's something else going on here. Even if you're not a believer, when you have when you are in the spirit realm, you see that there's another world here. Mm -hmm. You know, you just might be on the other side of yeah, it. Yeah, you'd be pretty hard pressed to say that we're just we're just uh, atoms just floating around. <laughs> right. Like there's there's got to be something more, even like with the heightening of. Uh, alien uh, sightings and stuff going on. Uh, a lot of people seeing giant beings in their backyard. Like that's that's starting to happen more and more now. Uh, more people saying that they've seen Bigfoot, and I think it's all just spiritual, like you're saying. It's the spirit realm mm -hmm. leaking in. <clears throat> yeah. I saw an article, which I was glad we I'm glad we got to do this again because I saw an article. It was an article and it was a guy, it was a video too talking about it where these, these scientists are doing these, this research on these aliens in like these leading experts in the field are all saying these leading experts in the field, you know, with like alienology and all that stuff are saying that the beings that they're, the beings that they're seeing and stuff like that, the, the research they're doing, all the research points that these beings did not come from space that they're interdimensional beings, meaning they were already here coming from like another dimension. Mm. And then a lot of them are getting to the place that maybe it is a, maybe they are demons, you know, maybe it could be. But a lot of the research is pointing at that there's, that there's no spacecraft. Nothing's coming from outer space. The, these beings that they're seeing or that, you know, you hear about these meetings that they're having with aliens and stuff like that. They say these beings are just coming out of like portals and stuff like right. that. They're coming out of nowhere. Just appearing and and there's no one coming from the sky and landing down they say you'll see like the flying saucers and stuff and going through the sky different things on the sky but you're never seeing anything come from outer space to the planet it's always they're like right here with us the whole time and some of say well they're cloaking but but all these scientists are saying we have no evidence that they're you know or astronomers scientists saying that they're coming from like outer space wow. so what do you think about that i mean it's got to be, for me, it's got to be, it's got to be spiritual. Yeah. It's got to be, if not demons, you know, there's lots of um, different types of angels the Bible talks about, different things that aren't human that mm -hmm. the Bible talks about. Um, yeah, it's got to be just more people paying attention and we're, we're more able to know what's going on other places. Yeah. So that's why that's why it seems like it's ramping up, but it's it's probably been there for for a long time. We just didn't have access to it. Now we have access to it. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's got to be. I agree 100%. I mean, you know, there's always a sliver of you know, you have this some maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm way off base, but just the fact that me and you have done a lot of research and watched a lot of videos and we've seen stuff to where we're like Something's going on, you know, yeah. something's behind the scenes, especially all this alien talk, you know, and I know we got a little off base because of talking about Hollywood stuff, but that's why I la labeled the video what it, what I labeled it. So we could kind of dive into different topics because I, th I think you're seeing it in the culture, you know, do we have, is Beyonce a lizard <laughs> demon? <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that, you know? Yeah, it's a little, 
a little far fetched. It's a little far fetched, you know. Are they are they all sacrificing kids? And you know, that might be more of reality, you know. Not mm -hmm. that there's there's definitely something going on with kids being you know sacrificed in these in these rituals, you know. Uh, and I think it's funny that people can believe that she might not be human versus she's just being affected by a spirit. How that's how that can be more believable. That's kind of funny to me. Yeah. Because they, they call us crazy because we believe in spiritual, but they believe in monsters and creatures from right <laughs> from who knows where. Right, and they, we make movies about it, mm -hmm. monsters and creatures and people. It's science fiction. I'm just like, but, but like, why are the movies and the, the stuff getting even darker? And there's more like rituals being done. And why, why is that kind of stuff, you know? And people can talk about ghosts. And they can believe in ghosts. And I'm like, so you can believe in your dead grandma coming back and walking around your house, but you can't believe that maybe there's that you're, you know, you can't believe that your favorite artist is, you know, being influenced or is may not be human, you know. Um, and at that level, wouldn't you think at that level that that those if there is if there are beings, spiritual beings posing as humans, shape shifting, wouldn't you think that they could uh, at, at that level? Wouldn't you think that would be the level that they want to want to be at to influence, right. get the to most influence? influence? Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. And the another thing, why would they cover it? You know, you see, you see stuff that's almost undeniable, mm -hmm. and then it gets deleted. Right. Why does that? Why is that? Why is that consistent? You know. Right. That always happens. They always say, "Oh, it's just whatever, whatever, blase, blase," and then you don't see it anymore. Why? Why do y'all keep Why cover it up? It? Yeah, if it's not real. <laughs> Why try to hide it? If it's not real, then what do you care? Mm -hmm. You know? What do you care if it's not? Well, we got we to gotta speak truth. And I'm like, but I mean, there's people believe all kinds of weird, strange stuff. You know, why this? Right. Why this one particular thing? Why do you got to shut it down? You know? Yep. So, obviously, there is an agenda. There is something going on behind the scenes. Um, I mean, we just in our experience of trying to do these videos... We have ran into it has taken us nearly like two months in order to do this this one video because we've had so many things happen. We've we've had videos just be deleted. We've transferred videos; they would be gone. Uh, we've had mechanical malfunctions. We've had just today we had Enix chair bite the dust, and that chair is supposed. My mom said that chair holds three hundred three hundred pounds or something like, and, and and it just all of a sudden just decides it's going to break. And some people yeah. say, "Oh, that's just coincidence," and I was like, "Yeah, but when you." It should be easy to record some videos, you know. Right. So I think that there's a there's a hidden realm going on. There's something. There's things going on behind the scenes, and uh, you know maybe we're kind of waking up to it. I think a lot more people are waking up to it. They may not say, "Oh, it is. This is these are demons. God of the Bible is real." But they're saying something's up. Like, why are they talking about? Why would the government come out and say aliens are? We've been talking with aliens. They've existed for a long time. You know, why would they come out and even say those statements? That mm -hmm. that I mean, twenty years ago they'd be like, "Don't listen, he's a wacko. We're not gonna let him talk in front of the camera anymore." Right. Now they're talking about it like, "Oh, this is what's going on." Right. Of course, people now are like, "I gotta pay my bills, man. I don't really care about ET flying around Las Vegas and gambling. I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pay my bills, you know." Yep. Uh, so I just think it's very interesting, and like we say in all these videos. Uh, these are all just opinions. These are speculations. This is our viewpoint. Theories. We're not, they're theories. These are, but we do believe a lot of it to be true. And even if 60% of it's true, we're, we're on to something. You know? we're, we're chasing a rabbit that one day is going to be caught. So, um, You see these uh, TV personalities will just short circuit. Uh, uh, you'll see things go wrong with them. They'll just stare into the cameras like they've frozen, like they're almost having like a seizure. Or something's going on um, uh, you'll see all these different things happen and we both talked about like we've talked about the shape shifting um, I, I also want to this makes me think about Skinwalker Ranch and I know there's a show on like believe the History Channel that talks about Skinwalker Ranch you ever heard of Skinwalker Ranch mm -mm. so it's this place where all these supernatural phenomenon are going on and there's a guy it's it's past hands over the years and there's been crazy things like you know a guy's a man a family that was out there seeing a wolf that he shot it with all these guns and it just it would blow chunks off of it and the wolf would just look at him and just keep walking around it couldn't kill it 
you know, um, and the wolf was huge. The wolf was almost as tall as we were. Went up to, it was this gigantic wolf. And then we go into the woods and you see, you would see orbs flying around, shooting lasers at them, different th crazy stuff. And then the orbs are going to the woods and this mysterious black creature that's breaking trees would all of a sudden appear in the woods and run into the woods. And you'd see all these like flying saucer things going around, uh, all the supernatural stuff going on, cows being mutilated and cut to pieces to where, um, the cuts are so precise. Like, it's like, how, how it's like, how could that even happen? Right. You see all these things, you know, going on. And so this, this guy, he bought the, he bought the property and he wanted to do research out there. Well, he does research and he all, he said, I don't want this to be a laughing stock. I want us to actually do research and find actual proof and data. Something's going on out here. And so he, he, he'll start recording and start doing things. And every time they try to find something, they see a light or a warp, or they see something, or they see this creature like on the edge, or something crazy happens. Every time they they see that and try to record, it's it's like their their camera their camera fails, and so uh, all these things will all these things would uh, would start happening, and their camera would you know give out, and all of a sudden, or the the GPS they try to set up a GPS, and the GPS would like uh, set up un show that they're like twenty feet underground, you know, and these guys are like this machine does the chance of it like shutting down is minimal. Right. So all the, every time they try, they, the camera won't focus and uh, they'll set up all, they, they set up like three or four cameras. And when they set up the cameras, uh, the cameras, uh, uh, wouldn't record, you know, they couldn't get them record. They had drones flying in the sky to try to find out what was going on and the drones would start malfunctioning. So it's a, one of those, one of those places at, uh, you know, Skinwalker Ranch where, you know, all this, uh, stuff is this all the stuff is going on so you know diving back into some spiritual stuff what was really interesting that i saw was and you have to you know tell me what your perspective on it is too is elon musk and the fact that he had an experience with his nanny where uh him and his nanny are in in, in his room i believe it was and she said that they're sitting there and she's you talked to her today about it and she describes, you know, she describes it, you know, the experience like it actually happened. And mm -hmm. I think people ask her, she said, oh, what happened? I mean, people don't believe me. They think I'm crazy. Right. She said like literally like a portal opens up and, and then the, the portal opens up and all of a sudden she said they were like pulled into this portal and they were in like this area where it was this darkness and these, uh, these, she said they were there and they could feel like things. She could feel stuff watching her. And she said all of a sudden she could see these beings coming towards her. And these beings were like, they just looked grotesque and they were just crazy looking. Like she's just describing them. And they, she could feel that the beings wanted to hurt her. And while all this is happening, Elon, she said, Elon's just sitting there. And he's just like, these are my friends. And she could feel like the intentions, like she could almost hear them talking. They want to eat you. Like devour you they want she felt like these that she could like feel that they they wanted to kill her and she said elon's just sitting there watching and uh she said all i knew is i she's like i just knew i had to call up you know call upon the name of the lord she said i started praying and then when i did like all of a sudden we're they they like they, they fly back and then all of a sudden i grab his hand i start floating up in the air and i grab his hand and next thing i know we're out of the portal and then we're we're sitting you know in back in the room again now, people can be like, that woman's crazy. Or you can think the other side of it that, you know, maybe it is true. Could be some truth to it. Could have been a vision. Yeah. Could have been anything, you know. Uh, but, yeah. I've heard, yeah. I heard something about that. I also heard somebody in his family saying that he could be the one to introduce the Antichrist or something like that. Have you heard about that? I think so, yeah. yeah like, he isn't it, but he could be the one, you know. Yeah. So there might be. I mean, he's a man with a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of power right now. So who knows? Uh, who knows what where the truth lies in there? Somewhere, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people believe, like you know, you hear people saying, "Well, Obama's the Antichrist," or or uh, Trump's the Antichrist, mm -hmm. or or uh, now President uh, Elon, President Biden's the Antichrist. Uh, Biden's the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna know real quick if he's it, cause yeah. the way he can barely get get a couple of sentences together. So we're gonna know really <laughs> quick if it's it's him, cause if he all of a sudden intelligent and mm. starts walking around, go you're like, yeah, there's something. Yeah, Biden's not home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Biden's gone. You know. Uh, so yeah, I, 
you so you think it might uh, that something like him that could be ushering someone like the Antichrist in. That's a very you know interesting thing to think to say. Do uh, you think a lot of that stuff is going on behind the scenes in Hollywood, like that the, the Nanny described? But they're just, and maybe that maybe these celebrities are seeing it, or these people of influences. Do you think that it's happening? First of all, and also, do you think that why, or why do you think that people more people aren't exposing it if it is happening? Uh, I think it's definitely possible. I don't know for sure, but uh, and. Um, as far as people not talking about it, I mean, just like they reacted to the nanny, you know, they're going to think they're crazy. They're not going to believe it. Uh, but eventually, I think people are growing more um, desensitized towards that kind of thing where it's not a shock anymore. Like, oh, she's talking to demons or whatever, where now, like, you got artists dressing up like demons and uh, saying they talk to spirits and stuff all the time. Uh, Ouija boards are like popular for some reason, like all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's not, I don't think it's going to be as far fetched in the future. Who knows how far in the future, but you think some of them wanted their interest in it because maybe they have relatives that have passed away. They want to reach out to them through the Ouija boards. They want to, um, connect with them. Yeah. And they reach out to them, and then they reach out in the atmosphere, and they find out there's it that, that spiritual atmosphere that there's something, there's more things out there than just maybe their dead grandma. All right. You know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that you can actually reach your dead grandma, right. but <laughs> you definitely are probably conjuring up something that wants to take advantage of you. Yeah. Because you're ignorant to the spiritual world. But if you, if you're a Christian and you read your Bible, you know that you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> right. Like who was it went to a psychic? Was well, Sam? Uh, no. Uh, not, well, Samuel was the prophet. Uh, I, it was um, I'm trying to remember his name. It was the king, Saul. See, yep, Saul, trying to talk to Isaac. Or somebody like one that. of yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember who exactly he was trying to talk to. Yeah. Maybe it was Abraham. Yeah, but uh, and the psychic. Well, maybe was he like, was trying to talk to Samuel. That's what he was trying I, to I do. Think that's yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, and the psychic was even like, "Why are you, why are you here talking to me? Like, right. <laughs> aren't you a man of God or something like that?" Yeah, and uh, yeah, he he quickly realized that it wasn't what he thought it was, and. Just like these people that are messing with the stuff now with all the Ouija boards and everything now, you know, you're going to find out the hard way that it's not, not what you think it is. Right. It's a lot of, it's a lot of evil and darkness attached to it. What is it called? Familiar spirits? Yeah. Familiar yeah. Spirits. They call them familiar. That, that's what reminds me of it. They're familiar. Well, why do they call them familiar spirits? Because they're trying to be familiar. You know, they're trying to, you know, connect. Trying to be like someone, you know, right. like look like look like um, uh, a podcast uh, podcast I'm listening to that these things, you know, especially like Skinwalker Ranch. They say that they'll morph into different things. That's what they believe. They're morphing into all these different objects, but they're all. But if you notice that the beings are just this is what they were saying. They're just slightly ahead of our technology, slightly ahead of everything to where like we could get to, almost like we could get to that place. But it's like they're following our progression of intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, but and, and, and the things they share are maybe just slightly ahead of we want to enlighten you about this. It's nothing that's so far fetched that our minds can't pop possibly, you know, wrap around it. It's you know, things that are slightly right. ahead of us, you know. And yeah, so, like just like Satan, he tries to mock, mock and copycat everything God does. I'm sure the demons are the same way. They try to mock, mock and copycat uh, God's creation. Right. So. And they have this sense. hidden knowledge. Yeah. Hidden, hidden. knowledge, you know. Mm -hmm. Just like in the garden, the serpent had the hidden knowledge. <laughs> he, had, he had the angle on it, you know. Don't you want to be like God? <laughs> eat this fruit. Yeah, eat it and you'll be like him, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. The Ouija board is the fruit. We feel like we, we don't know, so we have to find out. 
But my thing is, if there, if a being has been around for thousands of years, he's going to know stuff. Yeah. And he's going to, it's almost like they're going to know. I've seen this a lot of times. Like someone would say, well, this, this, this place I went to, the, the, the medium or the person told me that, that uh, these things would happen and they happen. But it's almost like, well, if they've been around for thousands of years and you've seen the pattern of things and how they happen, they can almost guess like, oh, it's probably going to happen this way because they know how things happen. And if it's a spiritual thing and they're able to travel at, I don't think they're omnipresent, but they're able to travel at incredible speeds to get to places, then if it's a spiritual thing, they're going to know things that you don't know. They're going to know about family members. They're going to know about other people. And that's the way I look at it. They're going to know things you're not known because they can be these places really fast. They can communicate with each other in the spiritual realm. Now, if this is pretty far-fetched to you, like the stuff we're diving into, if you actually, you know, get into the good book and actually look into some of it, that's not really that far-fetched, you know. It's not that the idea is not really that wild. It kind of makes sense, you know. So, yeah, diving into it, man. It's uh, There's a lot of crazy stuff out there. A lot. There's, a, there's a world out there that we can't see. It says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. So if you were, if, if there was a devil, we believe there is an enemy, what would be his ultimate goal? First of all, separate us from a creator. That was done. So he did that. And the creator had to find a way for us back. And the second thing he would do was try to put us at odds with each other. Whether that's through racism, whether that's through, you know, different viewpoint, different religions, you know, uh, different, uh, different ways of viewing it things it doesn't matter the vehicle but if he can keep us where we're not in any unity and keep division between us we can't really find out what the truth is mm -hmm. you know yep that's true yep so uh going even deeper into it we dived into the spiritual realm a little bit I, and i challenge a lot of y'all out there watching this video to just challenge your thinking you know Maybe you're thinking, oh, this is, what are these guys talking about? Maybe you're like, but really, the way I think of it, and once you see things that you can't, like, you can't not, like, you can't say, I can't explain it, but also that you can't get rid of it because you've seen it and you've had the experience. Experience always triumphs logic. Uh, it, it always triumphs logic because when you have an experience with something, your logical mind sometimes tells you that I can't wrap my mind around this. Uh, kind of like truth and fact are different. You know, we believe the word is truth, but there's a lot of facts out there. So you you can say, well, that's the facts. These are the facts of the evidence. But the truth says something else. You know, the spiritual world may say something completely different. And uh, and a lot of evidence is just perspective. It's just, oh, this is evidence. This is to be true. Well, that's an, actually just an opinion, you know. But when you start searching out real truth, real truth stands the test of time. You know, and so I think, like, stuff that we're talking about, it's not like it's foreign you it, it's stuff that you can actually do some research and look and say hey there is something going on now you may not believe the bible but there is something going on behind the scenes so um we're going to change direction a little bit dive into you know uh kind of where my heart has been the last few years and and, and i've worked in the field and i've worked i used to work with kids i, I do work with kids again actually uh but uh, but uh with teenagers and, and young adults and um what I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's just sad. It saddens my heart. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, Enoch, what do you think about this Hollywood pedophile ring that they have going on? What do you, what is your, what do you think about all that? <laughs> I mean, there's it. First of all, is it even there? You know? Right. I definitely believe in the possibility. Uh, there's too much consistency in, uh, witnesses, or people that are that are talking about it like it's always it's always somewhere far off like in the woods or uh in in some place hidden in the mountains or on an island you know you got epstein island and everything so i definitely believe in the possibility uh it's it's sickening for sure uh who knows what they're taking advantage of these kids what they're doing oh um, yeah it's sickening sad yeah disturbing disturbing all the above 
you think people get involved in that stuff and they 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 probably are shocked but the more and more they do it they just kind of get you know yeah it's probably another forbidden fruit you know uh something you have to grow a taste for probably they've probably been taken advantage of just like any any kind of mental illness type thing you know like you like killing people or you like you know whatever rape you know list goes on evil you like evil it's probably because you've been uh, abused or taken advantage trauma's of trauma's gone on yep. yep trauma just keeps going it's just a cycle yeah the word I was looking for was callous people become callous yeah, to callous it, you heart, know? yeah Callous heart, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to find that word, and that's the word of callous. And we, I mean, we talked briefly about some people that we think that have done that stuff and gotten out of it. Um, I feel that it, you know, in some ways, it seems like it's so. There's so much. You can see it, like kind of like the spiritual word leaks through. You can see that this is leaking through in the culture. Do you think it leaks through because there's just so much of it going on that that's why it starts to leak through a little bit and people start to be like, what's going on with that? Why? Wait a minute. What do you mean he got busted for this? Yep. That's probably what it is. It's it's probably a giant chain of blackmail and uh, you don't you can't talk to so and so about this because they might tell so and so. Uh, but yeah, the everything, everything done in the dark is going to come to the light. So, yeah, if they're out there doing it, that's why we're hearing more and more about it because it can't be hidden forever. Right. Truth and always finds a way. Especially now, like what I was saying with all the access to uh, social media and everything, cameras everywhere, you know, eventually it's all going to come out. Yeah. Won't be able to deny it. And maybe they know it will eventually, but as long as they can while they're alive or while they're doing what they need to do or until they get to the place where they can't be touched by, mm -hmm. you know, people that they, they know, Hey, it's okay until it gets to a certain point, but I also feel like, or they can get somewhere where if they do get caught, they're not anywhere in the country and they're gone and they mm -hmm. can live their life peacefully. If you kind of push that to the side, but I always kind of believe that stuff eats at you after a while and your conscience and, and gets at you, you know, kind of, it's kind of like, I hate to use the guy's name, but it's kind of the OJ Simpson effect. You know, we all kind of know, can't say 100%, but with OJ, probably did it, you know. And, you know, there's a lot of evidence pointing towards it. But it's kind of like the, the fact that later on he gets, he robs someone, you know, and does something else to where he gets caught and tried for a crime and spends years in jail. It's almost like that was there the whole time, you know, and he just like, it, it finally bled out into something else, you know. Oh, I got away with it. I can get away with this, you know. And, uh, well, you had really good lawyers, OJ, and they used the law to their advantage, and that's how he got away with, mm -hmm. you know, what I, you know, whether he was all the way involved or a little bit involved, he was in there, in it somewhere. And, uh, but yeah, I think it's like that a little bit, you know, I think people eventually, it gets revealed. Uh, yep, you got all these child stars that grew up in Hollywood coming out now, and they got the Nickelodeon special, uh, People exposing some of the stuff Dan Schneider did, and that's probably, you know, it's it's terrible, but it's probably a mild version versus, you know, like what's actually happening. Uh, and even like, I heard, uh, I read an article that Jaden Smith spoke up about him being uh, forced to spend time with Diddy and all this kind of stuff, and he's crying in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> like breaking down Justin Bieber. They got the picture of Justin Bieber breaking down, uh, like a bunch of stuff. It's just, it's not, it, somebody's going to talk eventually because they can't take it anymore. So you think people are just doing this? Right. It's not really going on right. or, or that I can't do anything about that. I'll just ignore it. Right. Or if I get involved, I'm ruined, you know, it's yep. going to ruin me. Yep. Cause they probably, like I said, it's probably a, giant blackmail chain you they're gonna punish you or whatever it is we'll ruin you we'll ruin you yeah. yeah we'll we'll find your family we'll ruin your legacy 
type stuff. Yeah. And certain individuals, they go, okay, <laughs> yeah. do what you got to do, you know? Yeah. And they're, they're the ones that are like, okay, they usually disappear. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like you, if you don't want to disappear, <laughs> you need to be high profile. Right. If you're a high profile individual, then you might not disappear, but you're, you might not be able to get a job anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So you need to have a lot of money to protect yourself. Or they'll rough you up and make you comply. Or you commit a crime that all of a sudden appears out of nowhere. Mm. You know? Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Well, I, I feel sad for the kids, you know, because they're just, uh, you know, want, they're being trafficked. You know, kids, you know, I think I might talk about an early, earlier video, but all those CPS kids just disappeared, you know? thousands and thousands of kids where are they gone the lady can't tell you and that guy's like what do you mean you can't tell us and he's like we don't know where they are it's like how do you not know where thousands and thousands of kids are right. like they were here and now they're gone mm -hmm. they were in this these vehicles and now they're gone what do you mean you don't know where they are you know they were in your custody what happened to them you know and uh, so uh that is a, that is a sad thing you know with our youth you know affecting them and I mean, you, you saw the whole thing with Balenciaga coming out. It was just like blatant child pedophilia in the occult, you know, I mean, and, and they just, they just rebranded it, you know, and then you had like, you know, Disney joining in, which makes me, not, not that I think all Disney's bad, but I just think like, why would Disney even associate themselves so they're towards children and, and, you know, benefiting kids? Yeah. What do, what do kids need? What do, what do kids have business with, uh, B, what's it called bdsm or whatever yeah what is, why do they need those outfits that yeah why that's sense. that video that came out and of course as soon as that came out they shut that down because yeah. then that was you know that was a huge huge backlash towards it and uh so uh why do they need that stuff and even yeah. the diapers having symbols on them that that represent different forms of pedophilia mm -hmm. you know it's like why do you why are you doing that well of course we we, we know why there's you can't like just say when you have a diaper that comes out with these symbols on it, you can't just say coincidence because they m manufactured it and shop millions of these things out. So it's like, that's not coincidence. That's someone with an agenda that has gone out there and they're, they're trying to accomplish, you know, they're trying to accomplish something. Yeah. And, and that also shows how removed they are from normal society that they think that that's a good idea that that would work in the world today. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. They don't, it's like, well, it's a line, you know, there's a line there, you know, and if you were smart and intelligent, and this is what I believe the kingdom of darkness is, they are smart, but their, their, their mind is twisted to what they do things and they don't realize what they're doing is actually burying them even more or yeah. exposing them anymore. So that kind of shows you there is an intelligence there because if these beings live thousands of years and they've been around for a long time, there's an intelligence there, but also, uh, uh, the intelligence is just so distorted that sometimes they can you can pull the wool over their eyes. It's, they don't have discernment. Mm -hmm. They can't. Sometimes they can't see what's really happening, so they can be fooled. You know, why would they send Jesus to the cross? They, if they really, really knew and understood it, they wouldn't have done that. They'd be like, no, 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 we got to keep off that cross. They would understand. So I just think that that, that that's kind of what's going on. You know right now you know spiritually with uh, with with behind the scenes mm -hmm. so and these organizations getting involved in it like disney getting involved with in it and then the balenciaga thing where it just it's just blatant something that's going on there you know it's and then being exposed and and you notice as soon as they get exposed they back way off you know when they realize we've stepped over this imaginary line that is there and they back off but the fact is is what that what has happened is they're testing how much they can do and they back off. They test how much they can do, and they back off. So people have to stand up to them. Whether you believe in a higher power or not, we can all agree that protecting our children is a, is the was the thing we have to do. Right. We need to protect kids, you know, because that's our future. You know, we don't have a future if we don't have kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that they're 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 trying to destroy that future, you know. Um, so it's it's sad, you know, seeing that that kind of stuff happen. Uh, with our with our kids, um, you know, you have, and then you, a lot of us being exposed. Epstein Island, you know, Epstein Island, you know, that being exposed. All those people's names that are on that list. Do I believe all of them did something? 
No, I don't. But I do think that there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. You know. Uh, yeah, I saw. I saw a video on TikTok. Wasn't looking for anything like it, but uh, it popped up, and it's like one of the most disturbing, bone chilling things I've heard. It's uh, these guys. They, I guess they rotate the the shipping uh, carriers, giant oh, metal I ones. I think I know where like you're going the, with this. Yeah. yeah, they put them. They put them on the boat. Well, there was one that they were going to pick up, I guess, because it was time for it to get on the ship so they could load it or whatever. And uh, they go to open it up to see what was in it because it looked like it was op- or it was full with something. <clears throat> and they go to open it up, and there's tons of carcasses in there, just dead baby, like baby bodies, like dismembered and everything. And they say they the guys that opened it up, they just – couldn't stop vomiting and crying and they were messed up from it. It was messed up. I, I couldn't imagine. And like even like the smell and everything like it had to be terrible. They said they counted them. It was close to like 17,000 probably something like that. Just crazy. Crazy amount. And the fact that they could even count them. Yeah, jam-packed full. Sitting like, there having yeah. all these emotions and jam-packed. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nuts. And then people will see that and think, "Meh, nothing's going on." Yeah, or not my problem. Or they you know? don't. They don't want to accept that something's going on. Or maybe they 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 they're just so overwhelmed with all this bad stuff they see. The news can just wear you out with negativity. That it's just you just get this compassion fatigue, and you're just like, "I can't do anything about it," so I'm just going to turn the TV off. Well, you can't do anything about thousands, but you can do something about like one. Or you can keep your eyes open, and if you see something, you can protect one person, you know? Right. You know? Or you can, you know, you can make a difference by not watching. If you think someone's involved in it, don't go to these people's movies. Don't buy their tickets. Don't support them. You know? Yep. Don't support this artist that, that you think might be involved in it. Don't. That's the way to do it. That's the way to influence them. Put them out of business, you know? There's ways to influence it. But it has to be one, it have one person at a time, you know? We all got to do our part in it, you know? Um, but I think we can get compassion fatigue with that. So speaking of the other side, like people say, I don't know what to do about it. Well, you can start with just a little bit at a time. You can help one person. You've helped that one person. You saved that life and that's a chain reaction, you know? But that's sad because that's all those people, Mm -hmm. all those people, all those souls, all those souls just gone to whatever that these people did to them, you know, whatever they were used for gone, you know? 17,000 people that will not be influential in the world at all, will not have a life, will not have a chance, won't experience, you know, won't on earth get to experience, you know, love. Um, yeah, that's sad. That's, thanks for sharing that. That is, wow. Dang. <laughs> and this was on the news. Like, it was like a news yeah. broadcast thing. It's crazy. I remember hearing about it. I remember that. I remember going, wow, what the heck? You know? Yeah. Well, I remember when, you know, Trump was in office and they busted those shipments of all those kids. Uh, I was thousands of kids and they were in these vans. They li- they live and they wow. freed them. But there was just, they were all these kids in these van, these two, these, you know, big group of vehicles. They were, they busted the people and there was all these kids being transported to somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm, some people say, well, maybe they're trying to get them in the country. But there was no, there's no AC back there, man. There was none of that. These kids were pro- for a different purpose. I don't think they were trying to be smuggling them in. They, they, where were they going? And they wouldn't tell them where they were going. They were driving somewhere. It's like, nah, these kids, they were, you were never going to see them again, you know, but they saved them. So you do have the situation like that. Um, and then of course, you know, we may have dove in the earlier video, but spirit cooking, you know, you have that, you know, where you see these artists and they have people's bodies laying there. Now some of these people, they may actually be dead. Some of them, they're eating food off of these bodies you know you have stuff like that these rituals uh going on uh at these parties these hollywood parties i mean come on i mean if you're into that stuff fine that's that's your thing and if it's just that we're just eating off someone's dead body it's part of a cultic practice no one's actually being harmed then that's what you believe fine but i but the truth is that people actually are being harmed 
and there's been reports that in these things there's actual dead bodies laying there you know there's actual people that they're eating food off of you know um and the fact that it represents we're eating of this body it's weird you know mm -hmm. almost like trying to imitate the body of christ you know mm -hmm. we're eating from someone's body here um so stuff like that you know uh which is crazy yeah. um and then we'll talk about what was so weird when all this pedophilia was cook cooking up use that term <laughs> cooking when all of it was just starting to build up hollywood goes on strike just out of the blue yep people say well they went on strike because the the they weren't getting the actors and actresses weren't getting paid so much it's like but it's really funny that during the height of the pedophilia, the Epstein Island, Epstein Island starts to go on. Hollywood just decides to just, we're just going to go on strike for like a year. Yep. And we're not going to make any new movies. We're not going to do anything. We're, and I'm thinking probably because I think something was about to happen and it didn't happen. And they, the, 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 the that stuff is being revealed. And the people involved probably thought we got to get out of here, man. This, I think this thing's about to fall. Yeah. I could be wrong, but it's just strange. Yep, definitely strange. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, we're going on strike now? I mean, why not just keep making movies? Put keep yourself out there if you're you're not you're not guilty. You know? Yeah. It would make more sense if you weren't uh committing any crimes. Yeah. <laughs> criminals well, hide. Yeah, yeah. Smart criminals, they you know, it's kinda like it's not very some of these criminals are not very smart, these individuals. <laughs> Because, like, if you ever see, like, gang, people that are in gangs, you're not going to know they're in gangs. Most gang members are not telling you. You might see evidence, but you won't meet someone they're like, ah, I'm Johnny, and I'm part of the Hells Angels. Or, you know, I'm, I'm Johnny, and I'm part of this group in Los Angeles, another gang in Los Angeles. They're not going to tell you that. They just do what they do, and they go about their business, you know. And uh, so I don't think we're dealing with some very intelligent people because, obviously, well, also, too, those gangs aren't in the spot like these. I could say that. You know, they aren't in the spot like these actors and actresses. So, now, we're not saying everybody in Hollywood's done bad things because uh, there's some certain people that have stood up and and some have admitted, hey, it's going on, but I'm trying to stand involved with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, of course, you what was crazy, you had the Sound of Freedom movie come out, mm -hmm. and Hollywood just, I mean, they rejected it. Yep. You know, the first initial company rejected it. So then it had to get produced independently, you know, uh, directed independently. And, and of course, the movie was a huge hit. I think it woke a lot of people up. And right after that came out, then Hollywood goes on strike. I think it was around the same time mm -hmm. that was going on. But why would they, why would you fight a movie? Why was people trying to fight it so hard, trying to get, oh, we got, see, he, this director over here that was totally disassociated from movies, but had an involvement one time. He was involved with children, you know. So why would you try to like shut this movie down if you're trying to help kids and you are who you say, if we're just, we're, we're trying to benefit kids. We love children. Then why try to shut a movie down that is exposing stuff that's going on? And it's undeniable. You know, it's happening. I mean, right. They have entire branches in police force for it. So why? Yeah. Why would you try to deny it? That right. It's, that it's not correct. Like, oh, these people. That's what they would say. They don't. No, this isn't as bad as they're saying, is it? No, it's actually worse than the movie portrays it. The uh, movie yeah. only portrays the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Um, I mean, I used to, when I worked with at-risk youth, we'd get kids in child trafficking. And it was sad, you know, because they were broken individuals, man. They are messed up, you know. Yeah. But you, you'd give them a little bit of love, and they would kind of, uh, you would see them, uh, you see some breakthrough with them. So, I mean, that's what I, I, I've been doing. I watched a few videos. It says, even though people have gone through significant trauma, if you start giving them love and start getting them the things that they need, they actually form new brain patterns and they can be fixed and they can be brought back to a place where they can function. But especially like during the first three years of someone's life, mm -hmm. if you've had a lot of trauma during the first three years of your life, you're more likely to have a lot of issues when you get older. So those first three years of life are the most important. You know, and so the trauma, I mean, kid, the babies would have trauma from things that happened to them in, in the delivery room, you know, and they wouldn't even be bad things. It'd just be hospital trauma, you know, and they would, it affect them. So, I mean, it, those first three years are really important. So we got the kitty cat over here, maybe paying us a visit. We'll see. <laughs> she's uh, checking out the scenery. She likes to let everybody know she's here. 
Her name is Ghost. Because she'll disappear in the bushes. You won't be able to see her. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have the Epstein client, client list finally got released with all the details. And now, like, as soon as that got released, it's like, let's talk about something else. You know, you would think that if a list like that was being released with all these high profile names, you think if people, even if they're in Hollywood, you think of people be like, well, start trying to talk more about these people man it's like we gotta bury it we gotta bury it we gotta move on to something else hey everybody look over there we got the uh, israel war going on you know hey look over there we got the this war going on hey we got that going i'm not saying that those things aren't important but it's just distractions you know yep. um in your opinion like i mean we've been talking about all these different things what do you think is like and it may take you a minute to get the thought, thoughts together about, about it but that's okay what do you think is the biggest distraction that they're doing as far as like an inter entertainment industry to keep us that people just keep that they keep falling for? What do you think the biggest distraction is that people are like, oh, that, they just keep pulling. It just keeps pulling everybody away from what's really going on. Well, I mean, politics is huge. We're coming up on election year, election, election year uh, that tends to get a lot of people's attention. Uh I'm not huge into politics, so, uh, but, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest. And uh, this, uh, the investigation going on with Trump, and mm -hmm. uh, they keep pushing that to the front. And, uh, Which yeah, that blows like my that. mind. Why would you would even try to do put your enemy, <laughs> take him out of the picture? Yeah. You know, whether you're Trump or Biden, that's your choice. We're just, it's just, looks bad when you try to put your opponent away, you know, regardless <laughs> while he's your know, election year. But so you think like elect political stuff? Yeah, I think, I think most people pay attention to that. Uh, how far do you think people would go? How far do you think people could be duped watching TV and stuff like that? How, how far do you think people would go before they're finally like, no, nah, I'm not. That's, something's not right. Do you think that you would have a good majority of people being deceived in one way or another? I think a lot of the younger crowd. I'm not an ageist, but I think a lot of the younger crowd is, is just they're more technologically advanced, uh, so they're going to look to social media and that, everything versus like someone that's older and don't, they don't really know how to. You know, maneuver through a computer or they don't have a smartphone so they're not really looking at all the uh, all the sources or options and they're just seeing it through the whatever the media tells them on TV whatever the news tells them so they're gonna be deceived easier I think but, but. yeah so you think if that was to happen there'd be this huge age disparity what, not disparity, how, what's the word? There would be a huge age gap to where people this in this group would believe it and then everybody else would be like, what do y'all know? There's something going on. Because they're so into technology, so consumed in it. Yeah, I think that's the... That's the... Uh, the pros and cons of technology. The technological advancements that we have. Especially with AI coming out now. It's like, what's real? Yep. They're getting good at it. They're not all the way there. You still still something's not quite right, but they're getting really good at it. This artificial intelligence, which is a whole nother thing. Um, but it's a new way we view the internet. Yeah. I mean, even Facebook has now, when you want to search for something, it's artificial, it uses artificial intelligence to search for things and finds it just. I mean, faster than even a second. Just, um, yeah, politics. You know, and I think that going springboarding on that a little bit, I think that's why the, the sayings, with especially Jesus said, render under Caesar what's Caesar. And he didn't focus a lot on the politics of the day. He, he, he did know politics and know what was going on and use that sometimes, but he was always focused on another kingdom, you know, and focused on a certain direction. Because he knew politics can change, you know, the atmosphere can change, you know, and that does influence people a lot. Yeah, politics is, in my opinion, it's one of the 
one of the best things used to separate us. Whoever, Absolutely. Whoever's quote unquote pulling the strings, that's what they use to separate us the most. And uh, they know if they can get us fighting against each other, then. Right, because it's like some people won't even, if they, you could be friends with them, and then all of a sudden, oh, you're a Republican? You voted for this person? I'm not talking to you anymore. You're, you're a racist. You kill babies or you do this or you don't care about individuals or minorities and you, you want to oh, on the other side, you know, you just free, you let everything go, you know? Yeah. You're a Democrat, you know, a demon crat and that, you know, they let put these labels and the truth is like, we're all really kind of somewhere in between, you know? Like, I think there are people that do lean hard one way and hard the other and don't have, but I think if I have to look at most people, we're all mostly, I think most of us are probably more centrist. You know, we're probably more like in the middle. Like, I believe a little bit of that and I like a little bit of that and I believe a little bit of this and I like a little bit of that. And we, we share both beliefs, but there's, you almost would feel like maybe we should just take the two parties away and vote for the person we think's best, you know, which would be better. Why do we even have one side or the other let's just have everybody votes you know mm -hmm. you know i know our government's set up a certain way but it doesn't seem like it's being it's beneficial right now because you have so parties at each other you know but then politically sometimes these guys will do one thing on camera and then the next and then they're having dinner that night hanging out with each other so yeah there's probably a better system i don't know what it is yeah but, uh, <laughs> i mean if if it was just up to the people it would also probably just become a popularity contest versus it could that too the, the job. right it could become that too because so, you've had some people win the popular vote and we're so glad that they weren't our presidents <laughs> you know you know yep yeah i think politically we we are really distracted by that a lot you know we get really absorbed in that i think it does influence us uh, I, I don't think it, it influences at the moment when someone gets elected or they pass laws. Most of the times it takes a while before the influence is felt, unless the person's a dictator, you know, or some just really a, not a good person. Then, then of course, we start to feel the effects right away because they start to in, use the military to their advantage. Um, but I think we, we have really have to live our own lives, but we're so distracted by that politically. So stressed, people get so stressed out about it, upset about it, you know. Oh, is yours gone? <laughs> a little bit of technical difficulties, but we'll push on through it. We can talk a little louder. So, um, so you know, getting towards the end of this thing, um, you know, thousands and thousands of children just vanishing, including thirty to forty thousand, like I was saying earlier, in CPS custody. Uh, then we talk about endocrine, which is when babies are harvesting babies and oh, adrenochrine. adrenochrine i said endocrine uh we talk about uh adrenochrine yeah. uh harvesting har harvesting uh when they're harvesting babies and stuff like that and using the blood of those babies to uh you know influence i mean to uh they're taking the blood and uh taking it and getting a high off of it you know stuff like that that and that is that's goes into the sickness of that um so we talked about a lot of stuff um, we have a lot of information on here too. This, this will probably be the longest video that uh, I've done, and I'm, I'm glad Enix along with me. We hope to probably maybe do a group session. We maybe look at that and have a you know several of us here. Uh, that'll be a good one. Which I'm sure it'll be very entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> lots of opinions, lots of wild opinions. A lot of personalities. Personalities. A lot, a lot, a lot, yes, a lot of personalities. Uh, I think the one thing that's cool about our the the, the groups that uh, the people that we hang out with is. Um, and we were, I was talking about it to another friend of mine about it is we're so different. Like a lot of us are so different in the way we, but we, we, we have a lot of similarities and, and that we, a lot of us just accept people for who they are and we don't really see color. We don't really see, um, you know, people may have different beliefs, but we still try to get along with those people. Try to be peacemakers. Try to be peace, be at peace with people, you know, as much as we can. Uh, but a lot of the stuff we're just, you know, challenging you to think about it, uh, challenging you to just be, you know, keep your eyes open, uh, you know, to what's going on, uh, the things that are going on behind the scenes. All right, Enoch, uh, 
as we're finishing this off, uh, uh, just going to hand it back to you, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as far as what I would want someone to get out of this video, if anything, um, just to know that no matter what crazy stuff is going on in the world, um, no matter if you've been abused or taken advantage of or you have trauma or anything like that, just know that you can lean on Jesus and trust in him and know that he'll be there for you. And, um, he'll protect you from all kinds of danger that you might not even see uh, or you might not know about. And uh, yeah, just trust in him. He'll he'll be with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. Well, thank you, Enoch. Man, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you being here. And uh, we hope, like Enoch said, that this uh, video, uh, that you watch it and it influences you, um, plants a seed in your heart, and hope that you've enjoyed it. And um, we will see you next time. God bless. All right. And I want to do one more thing. I was just thinking about this. <laughs> that thing was literally ready to go. Doop.